Welcome back to another episode of the Countercast, number 42. And let me tell you guys, it has been one hell of a week. I mean, between the GDC, more Sweet Baby Ink nonsense, Kotaku thinking it's a good idea to call out Melanie Mack, which is going to end worse than Asmongold. Aside from video gaming, there's massive news. Some genius at, at Sony thought, you know who we should ha- uh, tap to write an R-rated Venom movie? Seth Rogen, the dude known for his stupid Jewish laugh and, uh, and, and smoking habit. Which, that makes it completely makes you think of Spider-Man. Just draws it right from the noggin. Guys, there is so much to talk about. Before we do, I need, I need a good group of folks to talk about it with. Every single individual on the show today is new. They have never been on. So let's get to it. First, we got Nick Phoenix of the Phoenix Press. Tell the people who you are and what you do. Well, I am a genius billionaire. Oh, no, that's Iron Man. Uh, so I'm Nick Gibson. I'm the owner of the Phoenix Press. Uh, you may know me from comics such as Screecher, Torn Samurai. I have my YouTube channel. Uh, I mean, I'm just generally an awesome person. So you're in good hands. There, and there's, there's a reason I brought you on first because I mean I, I was after using all week to read about the game development conference and, and all the uh, the various video game going on. I know how important it is. I, I I know I've been taught that diversity matters. That diversity is our strength. And so because they were talking about how we couldn't really do any uh you know straight white male characters anymore, I wanted to get an incredibly diverse panel that would make the GDC proud. <laughs> starting with Hero Darky Dark, tell the people who you are and what you do. Yo, what's up? It's your dog, dog heel. The heel you don't need, but is a. And I'm just here to give content to all. I got a few comics I made, a YouTube channel that I some of my people really make, and I'm just here to enjoy myself. Yeah, I'm I'm stoked to hear about your comic, bro. I'm I'm all about independent creators doing what they can to bring uh just to, to get away from the mainstream, build a par- parallel economy. So once we go over your book a little bit later, I think that is going to be an absolute blast. So I'm glad to have you on to to shill that. And now we also got Prince Tyler. Tell the people who you are and what you do. Hey everybody, I'm Prince Tyler. I'm just a YouTuber and also I have a TikTok account and also a Twitter. I make videos on various issues such as social issues, movies, gaming. I love giant monster movies. And yeah, I'm looking forward to the conversation. Oh man, did you say giant monster movies? You are absolutely speaking my language. Well, well, I'm sure we'll find a way to loop the conversation to that. But before we do, we got one more individual to speak to, and I made sure to make them, you know, make save them for last. Not because they're the only person out there here with a camera, but because we all know that women are subservient to men. We got melee charisma, melee K. Tell the people who you are and what you do. What up, everyone? I am Melee K, one half of Melee Games. You might see Melee James in chat at some point. Uh, and what do we do? Well, we just talk video games. We want to have fun. Let's bring glory back to gaming, goddammit. I am tired of all this crap. Let's go have some fun. So on our channel, we pretty much just show you games that we like. We show you games that we think are dumb. We talk about the industry. We just want to have fun. We want a bit of escapism. We're still going to be honest. We're going to tell you what's wrong with this industry. But damn it, we're all here for the game. So that's what we do. Oh, beautiful. You love to see it. Well, guys, let's uh, l- let's go ahead. Let's say hi to the chat. Let's address them. And then before we get to the news, there's a way that I like to start the show. But first and foremost, we got QJ in the house dropping a words logo. Appreciate you for showing up, QJ. Thank you so much. Emily Miss Dismantling Illusions in the house. Oh, she's just a golden woman. Appreciate you showing up every stream. Salina Girl 69 says, I'm Hunter's baby mama. This is an ongoing joke. Yes, uh, I, I, I have Hunter Biden's uh, estranged baby mama in my chat. So we'll see how wild things get. DGAP says, it's time for Leon, who is still 33.82% more gay than Nerd Wars. Even with Nerd Wars wearing those glasses, <laughs> I, I can't argue. Every bit of what you just said is 100% true. The, the homoeroticism oh is strong on this channel. What did I walk into? Here early, how you doing? He says, hello, fellow gays. I am early. And uh, <laughs> pretty super showing up, boss man, hypnotic. Look at that. AJ not on colored people time. He actually showed up early to the stream. It, it, this is a first. Appreciate you for showing up, AJ. Dipsy in the house, Covenizer, you're so fucking special. I wish I hate that song. I hate that band. I won't lie. I hate Radiohead. It's, There's it, a it's, lot of very uh, happy people in the chat. I'm just gonna say that. <laughs> JTE Epsilon is looking like it. Yeah. Cryptic beats. Hope everyone's having a good Monday so far. Man, this is why we do it. We want to bring you guys a good way to start your week off. The king of Texas in the house, Vasnum 777. Are they gonna organize a group scream to solve absolutely no problems? Do you guys want to do that? Do you guys want to take one minute to just scream into our mics to uh let's not say we did. let's not do that? No, no, please no. I don't want to be cringe, so I'm good. <laughs> Serranos, unfortunately, the panel can never be 100 percent diverse because Leon is here uh until his internet dies. 
eyes. I've never had that happen oh, wow. on I'm not sure I've had that happen on stream one time in Blind Net. Uh, Son of Boom says, uh, Words of Paradise, uh, how would you feel if Spider-Verse 3 is like Captain America Civil War? What I mean by that is Miles and Gwen. Sp I'm going to be 100% honest, buddy. I got no opinions. I don't give a single fuck about Spider-Verse, any of them, mm. one, two, or the upcoming three. But if you guys have opinions on this and would like to answer, go for it. I like the first one, but the second one just kind of dropped the ball for me. Yeah, it kind of felt a little bit too bitter for me. I just yeah. have burnout on this stuff now. Like, I don't care. Stop making comic book stuff. We're good. Yeah, I'm pretty much the like, same. You're not like, make, you know, you're not gonna like make anything good anymore. Just stop. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. I mean, the, the, multiverse stuff. I'm yeah, the, the, the only kind of multiverse movie multiverse. I was interested in was the one that was the live action one, but that that was about it, not the animation one. So, no way home was, was fine. Language. Yeah, so Hypno's guy, he's like, yep, ESG funding secured. Hit me up, BlackRock. Hit me up, Raytheon. I need that ESG money. Uh, let's see. <laughs> hey, like, games in the house. The other half, the lesser half. Are you going to re? Normies get out. Re? Oh, all righty. And with that, we're caught up on chat. Before before we get into all heavy-hitting news articles, before you guys' opinions, I like to start the show off with positivity. I want to ask what you guys have been doing you know, recently in nerd culture, you've been enjoying, whether it be games you've been playing, comics you've been reading, movies you've been seeing, whatever it be, what positivity have you gotten out of nerd culture lately? And just whoever wants to start, start. Um, I would say in terms of movies, because earlier I mentioned, like, I like monster movies. So back in, like, uh, December, I saw Godzilla Minus One, and I was amazed by that movie. I've been, like, a fan since I was a kid, and so when I saw that movie, it just blew my mind. And then I remember seeing the Oscars this year, because usually I don't watch the Oscars, and I was so happy that I won, like, the Oscar for Best Dude, Special. I, I watched the Oscars just for Oppenheimer and Godzilla Minus One to get love. Like, I'm right there with you. I specifically watched for that reason. And so for this week, I'm going to see the new one that's going to come out this Friday for King Kong and Godzilla together. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to be seeing that as well. Yeah. Godzilla Minus One was amazing. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm a huge Zilla fan as well, man. Absolutely mm -hmm. huge Godzilla fan. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad y'all enjoying that. What about uh, what, anybody else? What have you been doing lately that's been enjoy you've been enjoying? Don't everyone uh, speak of My life just been dictated by Father's Gate 3. I just been, <laughs> that's basically been the only game I've been playing since like January. It's, uh, I guess it's a little bit earlier in the month, but like I got to see Dune Part 2 in IMAX and uh, worth the price of admission. I'll just say that. We might have some words about them because I'm, I'm, I won't lie. I'm one of the few individuals. Look, as a movie, I loved it. It was everything the theater was made for. But the Dune books are my favorite books of all time. I think this movie really dropped the fucking ball when it comes to not being like the book. Yeah, I've been watching some videos and kind of explaining that. Like, apparently, uh, I guess with, like, the, the character that Anna Taylor Joy's played, there's, like, a huge storyline that Neville do drop that's going to really impact Dune Messiah. Uh, yep. Thank you, Nerd Cookies, for il illuminating me on that. I love that channel. Melee Games says you know. Zendaya ruins everything. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> and last but not least, I guess, yeah, Melee K, what have you been doing? Man, first of all, I discovered that the Mario Maker 2 community is still very alive and well. We did a stream on our channel, and I was like, oh, we'll just play a few, you know, levels that our community made. And then we just kept getting people dropping in, being like, here's my level. And I, they proved that day that I'm shit at Mario. I was like, I thought I was fine. I was playing Super Mario World, whatever else. I was fine. And then people started making levels. I'm like, oh, my God, I, I need to get good. So I have a skill issue. I'm going to work on that. I promise uh, I will get better at Mario. But other than that... Um, I'm trying to find time for FF7 Rebirth. I'm one of the few people that's actually kind of okay with the direction they're going in. So I ha I did buy that. I'm going to be, pl be playing that. Um, I, I don't mind the direction they're going in. I just, the, the, I the first one I feel like was titled in a very bait and switch way. It's not a remake. If you'd have told me you were doing an alternate universe story, I'd have been okay with that. Just be honest about it. So I'm I'm interested in Rebirth. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting until it comes to PC. So it'll probably be a year before I actually play it. But I've been watching Hypnotic stream it, and it's I'm, I'm loving what I'm seeing from it. So. Well, James and I got into an hour and a half yelling match over this because I don't think that they marketed it wrong, but he does. He's not really a Final Fantasy fan, but he was just speaking. on. I think that's the common belief that people feel it was mismarketed. I'm kind of like, they didn't call it a remaster. They called it a remake. So in my brain, I didn't expect it to be one-to-one, -one, but I do get why the like fans are upset. I mean, so I don't blame people the Spyro, for The Spyro but... Reignited trilogy was a remake, and that was more or less one. It was one-to-one. -one. Like, like, they just upgraded the graphics, upgraded the... The, the audio and like that's what i expect when i hear remake is uh is built from the ground up but still the same as it was before and, and my thing like, is tetsuya nomura 
is the one behind it. What did you expect? Like, come on. That's valid. That's valid. And to you, what you're saying about Spyro, oh my god, I use that as an example as probably like the best remaster I've ever seen. I completely I, I agree. Well. See, to me, that's a remake because they built it from the ground up. A remaster is when they take what's ex already there and they just improve it like in engine. Whereas a remake, it, this is the, my my distinction is they literally start from the zero and build an entirely new ground up uh, game. This is so interesting. I keep getting into this conversation. So for me, a port would be like a one-to-one, -one, just like the exact same game, pretty much. A remaster would be you're punching it up. Maybe you start to be rebuild some of it, but ultimately it still keeps most of the game intact. And then a remake, you can kind of do whatever. So it's interesting that we all have like different definitions in the gaming community. But for me, I wasn't personally thrown off by the titles and I kind of knew right away that it was going to be different. And I'm here for a new different experience. Have fun experiment so yeah other than that well, i've I, just been you know playing dead or alive that's really my life so i mean no i'm, I'm glad you ended with, with, with talking about final fantasy because talking about what i've been super positive about in nerd culture lately i've been going i've been re-going through final fantasy 9 i know nick's got some thoughts on that but like nice. literally i downloaded <laughs> it two days i, I, I was playing it two Hipster days prior to your, dude you, like, like prior to, to your like tirade on x about final fantasy 9 i was like shit i just I've been replaying it for the last two days now, and now he's going hard on Final Fantasy IX. I'm and not then, saying it's a bad oh game. I'm just, doing, I'm just saying it. I'm just going off an observation. It's, it's my, it's my favorite of the trilogy. It is my between seven, eight, nine. It's my favorite. And I'll give the easy answer why. Zidane's a better fucking character than Cloud and Squall. Well, look, I agree there. For the record, my that. trash, my my taste is objectively trash because eight is my favorite of the of the three. So I have no right to an opinion whatsoever. <laughs> hey, eight is for the cultured men. You're fine, okay? We all love Squall's Thank you. aesthetic. Just saying. Uh, Hypnotic says, neither of the two explain the story. The story is when you are remaking an old game is expected to be the same. When they're mar uh, when they marketed the game, they never talked about the story changing, so people were mad. Which and this is coming from Hypno, who who was a big you know Final Fantasy fan as well, and who was enjoying both. But yeah, I, I would agree with him there. It was not marketed as if there'd be changes. Uh, mainly I think Gans it's a very Fantasy valid. By the way, I do think it's a very valid criticism, and I don't disagree with the fans that are upset with the direction, and I do understand why they might feel misled. Just personally, my experience, I didn't feel that way. I didn't feel misled, so I'm having a great time. Yeah, and like, I, I get, tried to play both. I enjoyed the Final Fantasy. Oh, so, no, go, go for it, Nick. My problem with it was it felt constrained. Like, it felt like I was kind of like I'm playing an unchartified version of Final Fantasy Seven, which... I'm kind of getting tired of playing like the same game, Uncharted, yep. Last of Us, God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn. It's the like Sony can only syndrome. really make... Yeah, it's all yeah, that like, 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 crash. Like Spider-Man even has shades of it. Like if it wasn't for the travel mechanics, Spider-Man 2018, I, 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 it would just be like all the other Uncharted style games. And I like Uncharted, but it's just I'm tired of playing the same game. Sony, please make another game. And, and uh, honestly, I think Hypno is about to explain what I feel as well. Is that he's having a great time with the games. I also have a, had a great time with Final Fantasy VII Remake. I just, I, I, the, the, I'm, it, I was annoyed at the marketing, not the game. I enjoyed the game. I just felt the yeah. marketing was disingenuous. So mm -hmm. I, I feel like it's a, a, a distinction to make. He says, but I can still get, uh, call them out for their bullshit on changing the story and informing no one of it, knowing they would sell more copies they didn't inform. And that, that's why I think they did a bait and switch because if they had said we're changing the story. Classic fans are going to be like, well, we're not going to buy it then. And the game would have, would have uh, you know, I don't know about flopped. It's still Final Fantasy game, but wouldn't have sold. It would have sold one million as opposed to two million. Right. <laughs> it's interesting. I feel like I need to go back and like look at the marketing cycle. I mean, the internet moved so quickly that I didn't like pay huge attention, but well, I, I'm well, hearing this response a lot. So the game for four fucking years before it finally came out, like it was such oh, a slow roll. And it's not, it's not, and it's not like, uh, and it's not like uh, we've been demanding a Final Fantasy VII remake for 20 years, and the yeah. first words they said is, your demands have been heard. Like, that was literally the first Oof, thing they yeah. said in the trailer. Yeah, the way, but, can we just talk I, about I can like understand the expectation, yeah. Like, uh, that was really Capcom, they changed the charge, for the, they charge for the story for $199. <laughs> oh, God, don't remind me, I'm a Devil May Cry 5 fan, okay? No. And like, oh, I dude, okay, so I'm, I'm a game. big Devil May Cry fan, but my, my favorite game series of all time is Resident Evil. And people look at me like I'm yeah. fucking crazy when I tell them I don't like the remakes. I think all three remakes are worse than the original. Two is the most passable. Three is dog okay. shit. Four is mediocre at best, so... Two remake is the only Resident Evil game I've actually ever I've ever beaten. 
Yeah, when it comes no, down, to, I think when it comes down to the remakes or Resident Evil games, I think the best one by far is the second one. Um, the third one, it kind of felt like DLC for the second one. Um, the fourth one is like, I mean, it didn't need to have a remake at all for the fourth one. Yeah, the, 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 there was no reason to remake Resident Evil Four, but uh, uh, so we're, we're gonna. I'm glad that we're all enjoying Nerd they definitely Culture. Glad you had things. Say that again. yeah, if, oh dude, I, I think I've bought Resident Evil Four more than any other game. I bought it, I think, for literally everything it exists on. I even bought it for the iPhone back in the day when that was a thing. So, uh, Wait, why, like, I I what have you bought? What, what have people bought more, Skyrim or Resident Evil Four? Well, have you have you seen the Probably meme? Skyrim. It's like Jesse and James from Pokemon. It's like prepare for trouble, make it double, and it's always Resident Evil Four and Skyrim covering Jesse and James' faces. I'm like, yeah, it's one of the most accurate memes ever. But um, since we're on the topic of gaming, since we're talking about gaming, we'll go ahead and uh, bring up this story first. Now, I'm, I'm sure you guys have seen it. I'm going to go over it a little bit for the chat as well because I've got uh, a, a, something to add to this that was not, um, you know, a, a little some extra. So do we all see this post from Sam Winkler, the individual that wrote, uh, was the lead writer on Borderlands 3? Yeah, I can see it. Uh, already, yeah, already I'm not interested. Yeah, yeah, so they heard Borderlands 3. <laughs> So, so uh, somebody wrote, a good narrative writer of any skin color can write a good character with any skin color without needing consultants. If your studio can't do that, get a better writer. And then Sam Okay, Winkler okay, started, okay, I respect him now. So, oh, yeah. yeah sure, it, it, well, no, no, so, so Sam That's not Sam Winkler that. saying that. Sam Winkler's yeah, actually yeah, disagreeing with that Sam Winkler responds defending oh, no consultancy. He says, oh. I see this argument all the time against DEI and consultancy, and it just highlights the total misunderstanding of what being a good writer is. You don't somehow max out your stats and learn how to write every conceivable character, plot, or prose style. Uh, and then he goes on to say, I believe it is under this tab. Let me find it. He, he made a thread out of it, and now, for whatever reason, it's... Uh, not showing his additional response. He goes on an autistic rant to verify himself and, yeah, insults Yeah, him. yeah, he says, knowing you can't, aren't ready, or aren't the right person to write something is one of the chief skills for a pro writer. Ideally, you have a team that can cover all your bases, but if you have a gap and hire outside an expert, just like in literally every other fucking industry, just further evidence that 99% of people spewing this shit have never created a single thing in their lives they're proud of, or the rest are just straight up bigots. Now, I have some nope. additional thoughts on this, but I want to give you guys is, opinion first. Why is it that the best like stories are written by like one or two like 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 it's like the meme of like best game ever written by one person worst game ever written by 500 people you know it's just like <laughs> it's like it's like you can tell the more writers you throw at something the worse it's probably gonna be maybe just hire one or two really good writers and let them do their thing. It's not that hard, people. I, I, I make that same argument. Like, novelists. If, if someone's a novelist, and I said this in my video, they're usually novelists work alone. They write, you know, six, 12, eight books in a series, whatever it may be, all with characters of different races, religions, ethnicities. Why can one writer write a book and they don't need a consulting company, but video game companies can't do the same fucking thing? But uh, do, do you guys have additional thoughts on this? Yeah, yeah. When it comes down to this matter, I think maybe the answer kind of lies in the middle. I mean, I kind of understand where the comment is coming from because I'm assuming that the person want to have a sensitivity for the case of like, you know, how a writer, like a person sounds like when they talk or something like that. But sometimes there's also people that could use their own personal life experiences and then just replicate their own life experiences to the dialogue. So I think it's kind of like, you know, somewhere in the middle, there might be some truth and some behind that kind of comment so maybe i, feel I like think a lot it's all just stupid ego. honestly go on, sorry. Uh, yeah, hero go for it the melee will get you in say that again buddy uh, i'll say i think a lot of it is just ego you know a lot of these people they like to probably i'm sorry going like oh yeah senior we care about the on test on that uh okay i can't speak to the authenticity of this way so that's why we need the entire concept counseling people of this when just like you know an individual person can just do it by just like phoning that one Mexican or like European friend if you need information and it'll be a lot cheaper. You don't need an entire company for this unless you doing stuff like what the creator Bleach did when he, before he walked the Dark World Blood Arc where he went to Germany for a little bit to vacation there. But I don't think these writers are taking vacation to these countries. So it's basically no. just a bunch of, you know, dipshits getting advice from another couple of dipshits. But you know, because they're a, a ethnic this shit, you know, all of a sudden their voice becomes like ten times amplified. They scan a Wikipedia article and suddenly they're an expert on the topic. Exactly. I think it's like it's something fun that happened in Chicago recently with you know all those people moving in such the city. 
did like a food program to make ethnic food while the people moving in. But all those people hate the food. Instead, they just wait for someone else to, like other immigrants, to just bring them food and then pay for that. And it's just funny because, you know, the people, the Chicago people, just like, oh, yeah, and you did these research to make sure that this is all authentic and culturally uh, sensitive food and yet no one likes it. <laughs> It sounds just like that. It was like the potential people food. just like exactly people can't learn how to make food. It doesn't matter if it's like an Indian person making Indian food or a black person making black. Like who cares? <laughs> exactly. I mean, I, so, so I mean, half the Chinese restaurants. If you actually go, like if you actually go in the kitchen, it's mostly like Mexican people anyway making the food. Dude, okay, so I actually posted on X about this a couple weeks ago. I went to a Chinese restaurant the other day, and it was one of the Chinese restaurants where you can see the kitchen, and it's a full Asian staff. Like this, this is a Chinese restaurant with a full Asian staff, and they were listening to Nickelback, and it was just so weird. <laughs> like there was something that I couldn't wrap my head around. This full Asian staff listening to Nickelback in their kitchen. Is that weird to anyone else? <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, I, I actually like sense. Nickelback, so I do too. It was just weird. Hey, yo, what? <laughs> Um, but no, so I've maybe, got it's, some what, maybe it's just how they remind them of how they really are. <laughs> I, I reached out to Sam Winkler uh, after he made these comments, and to to his to a little bit of credit, he messaged back. Now I'm not going to share the DMs just because I'm not scummy and don't leak DMs, but I am going to give you guys the gist of what he said because I feel like it explains the problem. Now, mind you, at the very end of this, he said um, that well, where was it? So he he called people bigots. Basically, he said. Uh, you know, the rest are just straight up bigots. Like, I feel like that is the most egregious part of all of this is that if somebody doesn't agree with you, somebody doesn't, uh, you know, has, has a different opinion, you jump the you know, name calling, assuming political ideologies, things to that effect. And I, I find that to be incredibly reductive. So I sent him a message. I sent him a very polite, cordial message, invited him onto the show today to ask him about this and to have a good faith conversation about it. And he basically wrote back to me, which again, credit to him for doing. He wrote back saying, uh, while, I, while I agree that there's, you know, conversation to be had, I don't uh, agree that your side would offer any sort of conversation in good faith, so I'm not going to come on. Okay. <laughs> so, fuck this dude. Like, I, like, I, I am, but what are you? Willing to take his I know who I am, but what are you? That's equi- you know. Yeah, yeah like, like, it's like, kind of this don't make sense. Like, yeah, I'm inviting you here to talk, but you don't think I'm going to give you something to talk about. Like the His posts are not in good faith to begin with, though. Like, first of all, calling people a straight up bigot at the end of it is just dumb. Right. But the other thing is, is he's doing this like goalpost moving thing. I don't think anyone has a problem with consultants coming in if they're lore accurate. If you bring somebody in and they understand the material, I don't care. Like, sure, bring in 50 people that understand the material. But like if you're going to bring in people who are ignorant to what the product is and then they write it and I say it's garbage. That doesn't make me a bigot. Like if you're well, gonna do if you're gonna do a movie about the '80s hair metal scene and you want to bring in in, in uh, Ozzy Osbourne as a consultant, by all means, please do. But don't bring in uh, Chad Kroger and expect the same results. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I just it, it blew my mind that like again when, when I saw him write back because normally these types of individuals, at least for, for me, they just leave me on red because I frequently like to reach out to individuals I disagree with. I like having people I disagree with on the show. I think it makes for good, interesting, healthy dialogue. And it's that's I, I think that's the, what, what we all need is, is good, healthy, interesting dialogue because it, it can build bridges, it can mend gaps. I was on Saturday Night Hypnosis. We got to talk with Director X when that whole Robin Hood situation was going down. And while I vehemently disagree with a lot of what Director X said, the fact that he was willing to come on, have a conversation i would say about 70 percent of it 65 percent of it seemed like it was in good faith like i actually legit have respect for director x even if it's a small amount but uh no when when sammy boy here responded with there's nothing you guys could say that i believe would be in good faith i was like all right well that that's no, I'm, I'm done like like if you if you want to have these opinions if you want to go on x or whatever platform you have call people bigots throw shade at the industry that you're working in and the industry that we are the paying customers of and then when somebody with a platform, well, how, no matter how small a platform it may, may be, my platform or whatever, says, hey, let's talk about this in good faith, what why, what do you have to lose by, first of all, you could be going on uh, to, to an audience you're not familiar with and Everything. convincing them to your side, which is something you would think they would want to do, or dare I say, you might end up having your mind changed when you realize that, oh, this is not a group of bigots, we're just concerned, uh, and, you know, concerned customers and fans. They have everything but- to lose, and they know it. Because here's the thing, like, I, I don't know if you noticed, but this seems to be the newest tactic of, 
they say stupid stuff and then they go protect it. It's like the Kotaku writer. It's like they're all they're all doing this. They say their stupid thing, they get people pissed off, and then they go protect it. They, it's like they know what they're it's know what the, the bull crap they're spewing. And they, they, they don't want to challenge themselves. It also is partially because they have really lazy arguments. And when they're actually challenged with it, they have nothing left to say. Or they start to understand your side. And then they're like, oh, maybe I'm the one who's wrong. And a lot of these people are the afraid baddies. to be challenged. Well, a lot of them are afraid to be challenged. Because, you know, right now in the industry, there is a big in-group that has a certain ideology. And if you even go slightly centrist to that, you'll get excommunicated. So a lot of people are afraid to even talk to the other side just in the idea mm -hmm. that they might be cast out by the people they call their friends so i i'm not surprised to hear that someone that works on borderlands doesn't want to hear the other side and has a dumb opinion because there's many people that have worked on borderlands that have that and, and, and it's amazing if you go to that post he's getting roasted by like, like <laughs> i i saw i made a uh, like like an almost 15 minute video on this and i found two tweets that agreed with him everyone else were just Dogging the dude. And I say everyone Bro, else. He hasn't there were like 86 right comments. Yet. It's not like it blew up, but damn, no one was on this dude's side. You would think that his audience, the people that follow him, would see this tweet and would run in to defend him. But no, that just goes to show that even his audience is like, bro, this one was out of line. Like, yeah. And you know, the thing about, you know, calling everyone bigots, every time they don't agree with them, is it makes us act so big, it's harder to stand out because now everything is. But, you know, hardworking bigots like myself, we had to stay up all night making different kinds of race <laughs> jokes, make some evidence original. But, oh no, I have to do a disagree. You get labeled. It's still in our group. I, <laughs> I think when it comes down to just labeling people, that People need to just attack the argument first and listen out before they start using that kind of labels. Because honestly, once you begin to use the label, it's going to shut down any type of conversation. And so, go with law. Yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying that's going. That's going law. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like it's so weird that they always do that. But like, I think they should just start with the argumentation and give it the argumentation, and then make their the counter argumentation that way. So. Look, if they want to insult us and make more words on my list of things that I'm called, I don't care. I find it funny. Thank you for giving me something to laugh at. So I don't care if they use ad hominems. I don't. It just makes them look dumb. And it's easier to point and laugh at you when you start throwing words because you have no legitimacy to your argument. So go ahead and yeah, call us Yeah, like, like honestly, whenever they bust out the personal insults, I was like, yeah, I won! It's like, that's, that's, that's just them telling me. And I'm I, I, like, hey, thanks for handing me the win, buddy. Kobe yeah, says, I call non-binary non people humanoids because they are hum because humans are binary. Am I a bigot? You are a bigot, but you're the best kind of bigot, Kobenizer. That's why I love you. <laughs> um, Cthulhu loves you over on Rumble. Shout out to the Rumble viewers. I love the fact that Rumble now shows up on StreamYards. Uh, they want to shut down conversation. Their opinion is king to them, and that's why they put everyone else that disagrees uh, in, in an ism box. And that's, that is that is the crux of it. I mean, we, we all know this, this. This is old news, but when you have individuals – that the part of this that bothers me the most is that these are the individuals that claim that we are in an echo chamber. Now I guarantee you, we are all going to wildly disagree at some point or another on this stream today. It, it, that's just what happens. We are not in, I mean, I'm sure there are individuals in an echo chamber. Sure. Go for it. But frankly, I, I think that's a very small minority on, you know, like, like quote unquote, our side of this culture war. So the idea that, Someone that, that you would assume that Sammy Boy would assume is in an echo chamber is now asking them, "Hey, come on your show, come on! I would like to hear your point of view." That that disproves the echo chamber thing that you so clearly want to cling well, to. He's literally in an echo chamber. He doesn't want to talk to somebody that's on a different side or opinion of his. So there you go. Yeah. See, James and I just disagree for fun. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's it's like regardless if you're not willing to speak to anyone else except for people on your own side, you're already in an echo chamber. And by the way, the people who block also are in an echo chamber usually because they get so afraid of your opinion and a debate, and then they block you, and then they accuse you of all that stuff. And it's like, okay, whatever. But Dude, the, the blocking thing is so funny to me because like I, I I've been blocked by a fuck ton of people at this point, and it's I still see their tweets because people screen cap them and post them. Like at this point, you should know that blocking does nothing. I am still, we are all still going to see what you're spewing because other individuals that haven't been blocked yet are going to screenshot it. How it's, many it's individuals so on easy to get on a block? Blur? Log out and then go view the tweet. Yeah, I experienced a whole new one. By the way, I experienced a whole new one the other day. Somebody was debating with me. It's my whole Twitter feed right now, honestly. Mm -hmm. But um, he 
not only did he block me after hours of we were debating like all day he blocked me and then i laughed at him blocking me and he unblocked me to reply I saw your and say post on this, yeah. this oh. is why i blocked you and then blocked me right after saying that so I didn't i've had the same the thing happen to me that is wow. so petty. It is so petty when someone does what? that. Dear God. Okay, it, it, it's wild just bitch you, you get blocked, Nick, because you're like the most, of everybody that I've seen on this channel, uh, on the stream today, you're kind of the most normal sort of milk toast opinion wise. Like, and I don't mean that as an insult. Like, I, mean, I, I know that like, like Melee K, myself, you know, we go hard in the paint on some of our comments just because it's fucking funny, but you just post relatively normal, reasonable shit. I mean, I have a, I have a side. I'm clearly odd in a certain side, but I don't know. I try to toe the line a little bit. I'm trying to be like, I'm trying to be at least a good little boy to some extent, but sometimes I gotta say fuck or fuck you or whatever. The thing is, they don't care if you're a good little boy. You just gotta be honest and aggressive with it because it always shifts what's okay. Yesterday, I could say a million things. Tomorrow, I can't say any of it. So what's the point of me trying to pander to any of you? <laughs> well, but but cause, cause nobody and Anyone who has been you know, experienced real life in any way, shape, or form can tell when you're pandering. Not just in nerd culture, not just in video games. Pandering is just something that the human mind, at least somebody who, again, has experienced the world, can easily pick up on. And nobody wants to be pandered to. That's why you have contingents of, of, of you know individuals that are minorities in the gaming space that are saying, quit fucking pandering to us. Like That's just a normal statement at this point. So, mm -hmm. so they don't want me to keep throwing pandas at them? Yeah, yeah, I mean, no, don't, 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 don't want the same <laughs> freaking Killmonger haircut on every black guy that exists. <laughs> well, I know what's amazing about that Killmonger haircut. All right, so I, I was on a stream on Saturday. I was on Saturday Night Hypnosis, and somebody or, asked like, the side shave. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And, and someone asked, do, do black people actually even have that haircut? Uh, that that haircut. So I Googled. I was like, you know what? I, I Googled black game developers and went through just a list of pictures on Google Images. Not even any game developers had that haircut. I'm like, <laughs> where, where is this haircut coming from? <laughs> can, 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 you, can you tell us? Have it, you know where this haircut is coming from? Yeah, like, I, like I, I have no idea where the, where the haircut comes from either. Exactly. I'm about to say, it probably just sold that, it's just the creators trying to show how culturally sensitive they are to, like, black culture that they're like, hey, look, see? You got the Killmonger haircut. We like Black Panther. <laughs> <laughs> how do you do, fellow kids? Exactly. It, I don't, it, that, it, yeah. In this case, it'll be, how do you do, fellow uh, black people? <laughs> yeah. Just Go that line, brother. Go that line. <laughs> <laughs> Sulu says, I'm playing a ginger chick in Dragon Zama 2, and I never had a vagina or luminous pubes. So, <laughs> that haircut better be in the RE5 remake. Jim and I. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh my God. They're going to assist like, like a lot of stuff for RE5 remake. I'm pretty sure. Oh, shit. That Cryptic Beats says out. he got that it. All right. We, we, we found one. Cryptic Beats has the haircut. Fair enough. Sorry, Cryptic Beats. At, at, at this point, like you having that haircut would be the same as like a Jew having a Hitler stash. That's that's what's going on right now. If you've got that haircut, um, <laughs> uh, it's funny that Black Panther gets a game and not uh, Captain Marvel. Yeah, that because all right. So here's why: Cap uh, Black Panther before all this culture war nonsense. Those comics did sell. Now they didn't sell like Spider Man or or or, or something like that. But Black Panther was one of Marvel's better selling IPs. So mm -hmm. Captain Marvel, on the other hand, has never been a big seller ever. How many first issues has she had in the last five years? I, I think <laughs> up to like nine or something. Like it, it's a ridiculous number. Dang. But yep, yeah, I just uh, we weren't we weren't going to spend too long on this whole debacle. I uh, just thought I thought it was interesting that um the homeboy did reach back out to me, which I thought would be a sign of, of good faith. And then mm. it was just to use flowery language to, to insult us because to, to his credit, he very much tried to cover up his disdain. He used very flowery language, but uh, I, I just wanted to give translation. It fuck you. Fuck off. I hate yeah, that's, that's, that's really what it was Against to um, a potential customer. Like why you're attacking potential customers. Yeah. That's it's like rule logical. number one of being a content creator. Don't attack the people who pay your bills. <laughs> hey guys, it's okay. They think ESG will pay whoever they lost. Well, see, and so point, we've had that more. conversation a lot on here exactly. about ESG because I see people saying ESG is drying up. I've got a slight, normally I'm the first person to be incredibly optimistic, but I have a, I have a bit of a pessimistic outlook on, on ESG. While, while, yes, it will eventually dry up, the money has to dry up. Uh, we now know how far this goes and that 
Uh, you know, we, we see like Sweet Baby Inc., for example, having ties to the Department of Homeland Security, the ADL, to the United fucking Nations, things like that. So when you've got individuals that high up that are, that are funding this sort of nonsense and these are government organizations and, and, and the government can just keep printing money, uh, I don't really see ESG, uh, you know, going away anytime soon. Like, yes, the money's going to become worth worth less and worth less, uh, just because that's what happens when you continuously print money. But what incentive do they have to stop printing money if the message is more important than the economy? Well, right, you said uh, that perfectly. Yeah. My my thinking is, e- even if even if your losses are being covered by ESG, the reputational damage you do to your brand because of these games, at some point, you know. Like, like, let, let's say none of your games sell because of these messages, but ESD is still covering the cost. You're still damaging your brand. And if they drag this brand down so much, like, for example, ESG is not going to cover merch sales. You know what I'm saying? ESG didn't like, cover Volition. Didn't save them. Yeah. And, oh, then, and sure. that's the other thing. Like, <laughs> video games are just part of this equation, okay? Mm-hmm. Like, for example, look at Pokemon, Okay. The games of Pokemon are actually a very small part of the overall Pokemon brand, all right? They could not sell a Pokemon game. Like, like the Pokemon games could sell like crap. As long as the merchandise sales are still strong, they'd be fine. But if the merchandise sales drop up, then Pokemon's in trouble. It's the same thing with a lot of these other brands. You know, Square, you go in their store, they got, like, jewelry for, like, every other, every Final Fantasy character. Like, they're, the merchandise for these characters are really strong. If you damage the brand... Of these characters so much, the fact that people don't even want to engage with them, then pe- then they might start to take notice. It, it's funny because I've noticed that specifically with the MCU. Because if you guys remember, you know, you for the last fifteen years, you walk into a hot topic and they would have like MCU sections all over the store. You there's like thirty different MCU shirts. You walk into a hot topic now, it's like anime shirts and meme shirts. Like there's not even an MCU section. Yeah, there's you, you can still find the nightmare for Christmas. I swear that's never gonna go away. But you know, oh man, D- don't ju- don't jump the gun on us, melee games. That is also on the docket for today to talk about. Yes, Pokemon. Oh dear God, you're talking about that guy with like who was like basically like I'm gonna woke a fight. There's nothing you can do about it. Dear God, like that guy. I just wanna. And, well, I, I like the fact you brought up Pokemon because Pokemon is literally the largest I- IP in the world. Pokemon literally. is the biggest IP in the world. So if this will be a very interesting you know, point to stand on. If, if we see that IP be damaged, that is going to be culture shocking because it is like, the big, you cannot understate that it is the biggest IP in the world. And if the you only thing damage that's that, holding it back is the Japanese underpinnings. Just look at what Nintendo did to the Mario movie. Because originally the Mario movie was supposed to be Peach Girl Boss, but then Ninten- Nintendo kind of went in and, and pulled it back a certain degree. I mean, it's still mm-hmm. there a little bit, but it could have been a lot worse. So let's see. Let's since, since we're talking about Japanese, we're, we're going to bring this story up here. Give me one moment. Also, I want to shout out. We have got across Rumble, YouTube, and X, 122 people watching. We've crossed into those double digits. Thank you so much to everybody tuning in today. We appreciate it. Uh, Sketch says, to be fair, Pokemon has been. Uh, uh, failing has been uh, sorry falling sucker to a lot of tumblr s social trends recently yeah and that's we're gonna be talking about that a little bit later on in the show um didn't harry potter have that title for a while harry potter was always in the top seven i don't think it was ever number one but harry potter was in the top seven for many years uh i don't know if it still is or not but it wouldn't surprise me um i can see nintendo dropping game freak out of humiliation the japanese hate dishonor <laughs> um, I don't know that they would ever drop Game Freak. Is is Game Freak an American company or a Japanese company? Uh, they're 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 Japanese. Because Game uh, Freak is like co owned by uh, I think Creatures Inc. and Nintendo. Yeah, like Creatures they, Inc. and Nintendo and um, one other, I believe. Yeah, like the Pokemon so, license is is not wholly owned by Nintendo, though they do right. have a very strong straight stake in it. Uh. So th- this comes from Colonel Otaku Gatekeeper now. His takes in general, I think, are very hit or miss, but uh, what he's referring to is Warner Brothers' discovery to expand animation production in Japan. The genre is increasing reach and and relevance globally. So he says, let's get this straight. Warner Bros. destroyed DC Comics, destroyed the DCEU, and has just destroyed DC Games and Live Services and Sweet Baby Inc. and are now looking at us in Japan thinking, oh, anime is getting globally popular. Quick, let's get involved with that. Parasites. Now, obviously, I'm on the camp of I'm a big anime fan. I do not think that anybody, any Western co- companies, corporations, 
uh, very rarely do the genre or do the medium any sort of justice. I think this can only end poorly and damage not only uh, DC's brand and Warner Bros. brand, but possibly also damage uh, anime's you know growing relevance in, in the West. What are your guys' thoughts on this? Well, I mean, um, have you looked at like what the localizers have been saying? Like they they are actually like getting to the point where they're telling the Japanese people how to make their stuff. Yeah, when it comes down to like anime, it's like a long history because basically anime during the 90s suffered like a lot of censorship directly on TV stations. I remember, of course, like DBZ being censored directly on the TV stations. But this time around is a different kind of way that they're trying to use their products because what they're trying to do instead of trying to cut the pieces into small little bits, what they're trying to do is replace the original audio to woke audio to make it better for them like i remember like it was not so long ago when he tried to dub one of the animes i forgot to show but basically he used gamergate as one of the Dragon dialogue <laughs> for that dub so and then also i think disco tech has been underneath hot water too because one of the releases apparently also had a similar situation too and so I, again i agree like you know i don't think they should actually have their hands on anime not at all no well, it, it I mean, also goes to show that they do on. not care about anime in terms of being culturally relevant. They look at it as quick money. The genre, mm -hmm. first of all, it's not a genre. It is a medium. The, the genre is increasing reach and relevance globally. Like, because it's increasing reach and relevance globally, they're looking at it as a way to make money. Which, don't get me wrong, I'm a capitalist. I'm a okay with that. But if you're going to do it, I would like you to, to, to know what people actually love when it comes to this medium and why it is successful and why it has grown in relevance for all, you know, all, all these last several years. Why starting in the 90s, it started to, to take a foothold and then exploded in America in the 2020s. I also don't, uh, tw I don't even agree that it says it's starting, uh, the, the genre is increasing reach and relevance. It's, anime has been mainstream, in my opinion, since like 2012. Like, ever I, I since Netflix say, I would, decided, I, go for it. I would go even earlier. Like I would say, it, it, uh, anime has been mainstream since like 2006 or so. Like when the proliferation of tsunami, you know, back in like the 2000s, and then and then also, I, I still the, think it was more or less the rise of the internet than, and fan subs. Like, like I, 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 I think the reason I would call it mainstream in 2012 because if, if you're watching it on tsunami or whatnot, that's still a cable network, and it was for an audience geared towards t uh, kids, teens, and young adults. Now you go to Netflix, and Netflix is like, here's our original anime section, and they really promote the shit out of anime, and they have been for the last 12 years. Once the biggest streamer in the world is marketing Netflix to everyone, or marketing anime to everyone. Boom, it is, it's widespread. It's widespread. I don't know. I graduated from high school in 2006, and trust me, even back then, I was seeing Naruto headbands, I was seeing a bunch of DBZ shirts, like, it was pretty, pretty well penetrating. Mm, yeah, I was, I, was, I remember, like, days. when I was also in high school, that Dragon Ball Z and also Film Metal Alchemist was also popular, too, so... Gonna win, Ghost in yeah. the Shell. Anybody have any, any any additional thoughts on this before we? Because I mean, yeah, that's by all means. I agree with all you guys that it was popular. I just I think there's a difference between popular and mainstream. Mainstream is like, uh, here, here's an example. My my normie father, who is you know like like watches football, goes to church on Sundays, has a white picket fence, the whole nine. My normie father now uh, knows what One Piece is, can name Kathleen Kennedy by name, like. Normally, the guy that watches football on Sundays after going to church probably isn't going to know what One Piece is. But he was recently on vacation in Florida. He's like, "Hey, I'm at an anime store. What do you want as a souvenir?" And he sent me, like, like texted me a uh, picture of several shirts. And I was like, "Oh, the one on the top left with the skulls on it." And he just types back, "You mean the One Piece shirt?" And I was like, "Okay." <laughs> if my if, if, if my you know, almost sixty year old dad knows One Piece by name, it's now it is mainstream. I, I'm just saying, like, anime was like you could you could find anime pretty easily as. As far back as like the early to mid two thousands, like you go right. to the mall, like like Hot Topic would be carrying uh deep like I know like the big ones like DBZ, but even like Naruto was really popular. Bleach, Bleach was insanely popular mm -hmm. in the two thousands. Like yeah, but, Bleach may have died it, off it, now. It a Hot but Topic is like oh yeah, Hot Topic that makes sense. It's when you start seeing it at places like JC Penny, you're like okay, now it's fucking mainstream. It, I it thought DBZ started to JC Penny in the two thousands. Uh, uh, 80s, Ulysses 31, Mysterious Cities of Gold, Jace, Wheel of Warriors, tons of anime on. Yeah, yeah, there was tons of anime on Western TVs. I'm not saying it was. I'm just saying that you, you wouldn't, if you compare anime in the 80s and 90s, uh, and, and again, in my opinion, and even the uh, mid-2000s, to the sales of things like James Bond or Harry Potter or Star Wars, anime wasn't making a dent mm. back then. 
Uh, like, also, and, like, like, also, DBC I kind of remember- was a pretty big brand in the 90s and 2000s. Yeah, DBC. No, no, it was. DBC cool. was, but here's the key difference. The difference is, is that it used to be clumped in with just as like cartoons. Like obviously mm-hmm. in the nerd culture, we understand the difference, but in the mainstream, I completely agree when we started to see the shift to Netflix, that's when people understood the anime was a thing of its own. And just like this Warner Brothers thing, they call it a genre. It's its own thing entirely. It's not yeah. just like another branch yeah. of like Western animation. It's its own thing. So so it, I think that's the key thing calling... between, yeah, like no, you say, it's the key thing between going from like, yeah, it's popular. A lot of us knew anime growing up, but like now it's like people understand that anime is its own behemoth. It's its own mm-hmm. industry. Like, if, if any gamer saw this article and instead of it talking about anime, if they said, yeah, we're starting to expand uh, into the genre that is video games, everyone's gonna be like, the fuck you mean? There are so many genres under the Are you making an RPG, a first person shooter? Right. And, and, and that's how anime is. If, if you want to watch a, a slice of life or an action show or a detective show or, or a supernatural show, like all mecha. these uh, genres, yeah, mecha, like calling calling the medium a genre and not a medium shows you do not understand what you're doing here, which is why I completely agree that Warner Brothers is going to dilute what anime is. I, I think that they're going to, I think this is going to be a net negative, a net loss. I don't see them succeeding it though. I think it's gonna bomb before they're even able to like lift it off the ground. They're gonna attempt, but like there have been other West. There's been other Western properties that have tried to make animes, and people just kind of go like, "Okay, that's nice," and then they continue watching the stuff produced out of Japan. So, yeah, like High Garden Spice. I watch the Zatanna hentai made like games. I would watch the Zatanna hentai. Let's be real. The only time (laughs) it works is when you hire a Japanese anime studio to do your anime then then you can kind of work like like edge runners is probably the greatest example of a western anime but they hired a japanese studio and it was made by them and cd project red was heavily involved well and and there there's the difference between something like edge runners something like castlevania for example i think castlevania is mid at best and also we keep people kept calling it oh the castlevania anime bitch it was a french and american studio it was not there was nothing Japanese about Castlevania. Just because the animation was pretty doesn't mean it's Japanese. Like, Also, there was this special that came out last year for Death Note for The Simpsons, and they actually hired a Japanese studio for that one. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'll have to check that out. That sounds interesting. You said for The Simpsons? Yes, for the – it was the Treehouse of Horror. Oh, dude, that's I mean, sick. yeah, like yeah, for the I'll, couch I'll gags, they've been having guest animators for a while through their couch gags. Like there's a Rick and oh, Morty sure. one, to, like done by the Rick and Morty people. Well, that's that that's something I wouldn't be proud of, but you know, I'm yeah, I'm I mean, just Rick and Morty. I won't lie. Castlevania, <laughs> honestly, show. it's two se- it's a two season anime. You got yeah. Basically. Once they defeat Dracula, that's the end of the show because season three is a complete nothing. But you just did it. You nothing called it happens. an anime when it's not an anime. All right, fine. I'm wrong. It's, it's basically it's the cartoon. Anime. The cartoon. <laughs> season one and two are actually pretty good. The, the, where they enter the castle and Blade Tears plays, that is the, literally the peak of the show. Um, and then after that, it's like season three, it's it just nothing happens. Season four is, I will revive Dracula so I can have sex again. Like, th- that's literally the plot of season three. And I haven't even watched Nocturne because it just looks so bad. It's, so, it's not what it is. Not much. Yeah, to... yeah. Don't watch Nocturne, bud. D- yeah, don't. But here, here's the actual article on it. So we're gonna go over this article. Uh, Warner Bros. expanding anime production to more than ten series per year. Warner Bros. is looking to expand their anime production in a big way, with the media giant aggressively wanting to release double digits each year. The Asia Pacific branch of Warner Bros. Discovery is planning on expanding its investment and production in Japanese animation to over ten series per year. We have Japanese anime studio, which has been producing five or ten anime series per year over the last few years. James Gibbons. Warner Bros. Discovery president of Asia uh, Asia Pacific said via Variety, we're approved the expansion to take that to more than 10 series per year. In operation since 2011, WB Discovery Asia Pacific has helped bring over 80 anime titles ranging from high-quality anime live-action feature movies. These include popular IPs like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Record of Ragnarok, and more. Uh, We've sold them to third parties that have been more of the metrics, and they're doing very well, Gibbons said. And so because we see the appeal of the category, we're expanding it. Anime is one of the best ways to reach 18 to 30-year-old audience, which is incredibly elusive globally, albeit not in every market, but certainly in the U.S., parts of Europe, and Latin America. We've got strong audiences. It's worth pointing out that JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and Record of Ragnarok have been on Netflix and consistently remain in their top global 10 releases. Uh, The most recent upcoming release, Suicide Squad Isekai, 
is an original anime based on characters from DC Comics production by Wit Studio and WB Japan and follows notorious DC villains Harley Quinn, Deadshot, and more. The premiere is set for July in Japan. Gibbons added, there's Japanese anime that comes from the original IP, but there's also anime that comes from elsewhere. We've looked at our DC universe and said, can we take these characters and reinvent them in the world of anime, which is not straightforward because you have to do it the right way. You have to work with the right studios to make it happen and build your fan base. Now, after hearing that, which gives us a bit more context, what are your guys' thoughts? They've been trying to do this for like 20 years. I forgot and to the never train. I'm sorry. Like, remember the X-Men anime? They did uh, like late 2000s, early 2010s. Like that. Yeah, I actually they really enjoyed it. They did four. They did a Blade anime, a Wolverine anime, an X-Men anime, and I believe an Iron Man anime. They all came out at the same time. It aired on yeah. G4. And then you also had Ruby Ice Queendom, which like, what, like I tried to watch the first episode. It was like, eh. Kobe Hive says boobs are popular worldwide. But I, I, I feel like when he starts adding, because initially this stuff doesn't uh, appear, doesn't bother me. When he, when he talks about how, you know, uh, they, they've taught, they've released, you know, Jojo's Bar Adventure, Record of Ragnarok. Those are uh, basically their, their adaptations. You took popular existing manga and you, you bought the license and had well-known studios just adapt these existing manga. I think that's very different than an American company doing original work, which in my opinion will probably be filled with Western sensibilities, which is mm-hmm. the opposite of what we want out of anime. If I'm not mistaken, I think Warner Brothers actually had done anime in the past too because there was the uh, – I think it was for The Matrix, and then there was also another one for – Yeah, Blade the Animatrix. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the Animatrix is awesome. Oh, I, I love it. Um I think they kind of did something with uh, something similar with Batman Gotham Knights, uh, which is like got kind of like an anthology film uh, where they did hire some animation studios to do some of that. Well, Batman the Animated Series, uh, the the animation studio behind it, Sunrise, is actually a Japanese studio. It's the same animation Gundam studio Wing. that that, that did um, um, Gundam, the Big O. They also did Gundam Wing. Yeah, oh, fair enough. They also did Gundam Wing. I, I wasn't aware of that one, but like, te- so we we've seen. Warner Bros. work with them in the past. Like it, it's my problem is we've all seen Mo- of Warner Bros. in the last five years become everything we hate about American pop culture corporations. Yeah. Well, more people yeah, are also think, turning I, to anime because the West has not been doing well in their cartoons. So by doing that, like you're just gonna ultimately be like it's moving the same thing over. It doesn't change anything. We're also not gonna like it over here. Yeah, I there's a reason why anime is more popular. Yeah, I think a big thing that they're missing is that anime isn't just popular just because it's Japan. I mean, you know, that's part of it, but a big thing is just it's the context of the story itself. I mean, as you know, Nick mentioned before, this isn't the first time, you know, this company or other company tried to do anime. You know, a few years ago, remember back though that that Suke anime and you know, it was the trash, like just having to be anime is not just gonna make it be popular, it's gonna be stories. And well, yeah, things like, you know, like the Ragnarok and JoJo worked out big on Netflix. You gotta remember that, you know, those were originally manga written by mm. great stories written by Japan people. And that's because, you know, they have a lot of heart and interest and stuff that made it interesting beforehand. While, you know, other kind of stuff like, you know, High Gods and Spice, that Yasuke anime and other stuff, you know, they literally are just like a one time. Not even one time hits, but just they flew yeah, off. Yeah, like Spice seconds. came out and flopped. People rejected it because it wasn't. It, it was everything wrong with Western attempts to to copy anime. Yeah, and the same thing is happening in the manga scene. Like, uh, comic sales are in the toilet, but manga sales are through the roof. And and the comic book people are like, oh, oh, we don't know why this is happening. I can tell you exactly why because manga, it just like anime, like Melee said, it it offers an alternative. It offers good stories it's like it's like I, I saw this meme once where it's like i want to get into batman what do i do it's like you know this is this is that like how do i get into dragon ball start with volume one well <laughs> it, 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 so i i read this thing the other day that said that demon slayer just, just which is like 56 issues or something like that. i don't even think it's 56 issues i think it's, I, I don't remember how many issues it is but the point is demon slayer with its limited issues sold m- just by itself more uh outsold the entire american comic books industry last year I mean, like how just that Demon one Slayer series, came just out. the sales of that one series outsold every comic sale of, of every book in the American scene added together. I think it's the I think same thing from the movie, too. When the movie came out, it actually outgrew Shang- Shang-Chi when it came out. Well, was, was, was Shang-Chi even in theaters? I thought that was straight to Disney+. Plus. It was. I saw it in theaters. 
Oh, really? I thought, okay, well, there we go. I saw Shang-Chi on Disney+. Plus. It was one of the last MCU movies I ever watched. <laughs> uh, yeah, Cthulhu that, says, yeah. same with movies. Ever since Train to Busan, a lot of my friends and I started watching Japanese, Korean movies. Some with Lassie's mm -hmm. watching. K Dude, same. Like, I, 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 The Man from Nowhere is one of my favorite movies. It's Korean. Uh, I love Train to Busan. I recently watched a Korean horror film called, like, Ganjin Haunted Asylum, and it was, like, the first good found footage film since the original Cloverfield. Like, yeah, I, I've been grabbing for Korean uh, movies. What? Was, oh, yeah, Snowpiercer was Korean. Yep. Uh, I mean, it's kind of like a mix here. Like, it's a French comic um, made by Korean filmmakers with, like, a semi-American cast. It's like a weird hodgepodge. Yeah, all in all, I just... I don't know. I, I'm... On paper, I can see why Warner Brothers would think that this is a good why, why, why this is a good idea because they see the explosion of anime mm -hmm. i don't think they've looked at why there's been an explosion of anime which is people are rejecting your western ideologies mm -hmm. your western sensibilities and your western media so if you're going to make anime i, I you probably need to make it very asian like that's what people want it's it's, it's like the people who yep. flee uh, a, a a blue state and then they continue to vote, vote blue. And then the state they go to starts going on to like, why does this keep happening? It would be more uh, cost yeah. effective for them to literally just fix the stuff they have right now. Mm -hmm. And then I know, but yeah, they're too well, to do that. They can make more money later. And make but that money. requires so effort. Like out. that requires effort. It, it does, it but down. also creating a whole anime is effort too. So why don't you put the effort into the product that people are already paying attention to, make that better, bring people back, and then afterwards, if you want to do an anime spinoff to make even more money, go for it. Well, that requires some I mean, accountability. Yeah. That requires them to admit they're wrong. You know, <laughs> there's, there's hey, really if they don't want to, if they don't want to, wrong. if they don't want to take accountability, that's on them. We're gonna go. I mean, I agree with anime. you. I agree with you. I'm just like you know. <laughs> No, no. I, I mean, and yeah, I don't even say they even need to make like more Asian self. Just you know, because you know, even more Western properties have been popular, like Doom and stuff. Stuff that's you know on Asian, but it's still popular because it's just a really good story. But just realize that hey, Wait, you know, did that you say Doom and doing... story? Doom. Uh, did you say Doom or Dune? D o o m Doom. or D u n e? D u n e. Okay, okay. okay yeah. There we go. <laughs> Dune is famous. For yes, I have a little bit of accent. <laughs> no, no, you're good. See, I, I think Dune is the exception to the rule, though, because I, I, I agree. Like people talk about how Hollywood's dead, how America is producing nothing good. I vehemently disagree with that. I think that we have had several banger movies in 2023. I think 2023 was a great year for American uh, uh, movies, and and I mean, yeah. not just with Oppenheimer, but there, there was a, a slew of good films I watched in 2023. They were just overshadowed by a lot of really awful negative ones. The Holdovers was really good. Um, uh, let's see, uh, Oppenheimer, The Holdovers. Um. I'm gonna I'm gonna need to reach in the memory banks, but all in all, um, what Hollywood I don't think is dead. When you've got somebody Mario. who actually wants to make a product that has nothing Mario to do with decent, any sort of ide ideology like... or uh, Future Boys is Leon loved Barbie. I love the filmmaking of Barbie. Absolutely, I, I think the the filmmaking aspect, the technical aspect of Barbie is amazing. But let's see, no Dune movies ever come to being as good. Oh, I agree with that hardcore. I I, I agree with that hardcore. Seven point five out of ten. Not enough Barbie girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you know, one thing that does worry me about the whole Warner Brothers thing is the fact that they're going straight for ten. Well, I'm just like, okay, you, you guys do realize you gotta build up your stuff from scratch, right? Like making ten, that kind of just make it seem like you got to going more from quantity over quality and it's just like okay that's gonna be the yeah. case You're most likely gonna end up flopping because you know then you guys just gonna be doing a bunch of stuff and then it's gonna get on and then you're not cancel like half of these just because you spend just you gotta make your so. bonus because like oh we gotta show growth and profitability how can I do that oh let's let's lay off half the people let's cut half these movies let's take a movie that's like we've already spent 75 million dollars on let's cut, call it a tax write off and like no one can see it ever again yeah, I mean, you know, the back girl one was justified. Yeah, I'm not backing that one, but everything else is <laughs> that's simple. Yeah. Well, we're we're gonna move on to this next story, which I think is probably gonna be the one that we'll spend the most time on because I think we're gonna have some wild different opinions on this. Uh, because la last stream I was on, we all had some pretty wild different opinions. So, um, this I'm, I'm sharing this uh, from from my boy Hypnotic. Um, it's about the Melanie Mac situation. Are you guys familiar Ooh. with this? Are you familiar with Melanie Mac to begin with? For what? I I am. Yeah. Yes, I am. I am. Did you see that one girl who keeps calling people back on Twitter? 
Yes, that's exactly who that is. <laughs> she's eating, okay. she's, good. That, she's that's uh, doing a whole different girl, type bro. of F-bomb. She's laying a whole different type of F-bomb. So, oh, okay. Alyssa, so uh, the, the disgraced Kotaku writer who has me blocked, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> said this. There's a story I've been simmering that I really want to pick up again. If, if anyone has any connections to a prominent female Twitch streamer gaming personality who leans hard into Christianity and homophobia, DM me or email me link in bio. Also, if you personally know any decently popular gaming personality streamers who have a meteoric rise in popularity shortly after adopting more reactionary views, DM me. Also, does not have the balls to actually tag Melanie Mac. Um, so, yeah, Kotaku didn't learn from Asmongold, and now they're, they're going to go to war with... Uh, Go to Melanie Mac next. What, what do you What do you guys See, think? Basically, I have, Alyssa, I have, uh, Alyssa saw Melanie Mac eating butter, yet still able to keep that frame, and she's so jealous. <laughs> I have very mixed feelings about so, the whole entire situation because, basically, for one, I do not like Alicia McCunty at all because I saw just today like she had a like a picture of herself with a tattoo that says i hate all right men here, or something yep. like that all, all and men that was angry. like you know the absolute worst i also hate her comments when she said that she thinks you cannot be racist against white people that was awful too but at the same time i cannot find myself siding with uh melanie at all because yeah. i saw her video i think it was last year now, what happened last year, to give you guys context, was that I think it was a church that was struck by lightning, and then basically it was in flame after this lightning struck. Now, I guess the normal reaction for a person would be, of course, hey, we need to have some sort of like Kickstarter to, you know, help the church out or, you know, do something to actually, you know, help them out, right? But in her video, what she did was basically, you know, laugh at it, at the fact that I guess the church was gay friendly. And when I saw that video last year, it's like, nope, I cannot really support her. I just cannot support a person like that. So, I mean, while, I, yeah. so while I disagree with Alicia right here, I cannot find, my suppo find myself supporting her either. So You I'm don't the find the here. irony in that, though? Like, it, it is kind of funny. I, I don't have a problem with her making that video. I don't know. I, find it, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Because basically, like, I would think if a person, you know, saw a church burning down, you would not want to make fun of it and just say, hey, look at this church burning down because there it's are a joke, that... though. It's a I don't joke. think it's a joke. I really don't think it's well, a joke. That, that's an assumption. I don't you like don't know whether or not it is, I don't like right? laughing at the misery of others, you know? She like, made a joke. Oh, I do. I think like, I think laughing at the misery of others is fucking hilarious. That's because I, mean, I will laugh at my own misery. Like, you got to be able to like, do both. <laughs> I don't know, like I don't know. saying bad, saying like really crooked stuff, getting people mad at you, and then calling you a joke. That comes from the Matt Wall school of of of, uh, of non apologies. So I think people I, take I, the no, internet we're, we're, a little we're, we're bit too seriously said here because this this is my stance on it. I don't have to agree with someone one hundred percent to be okay with them. So that's is is, is, is that your line, uh, uh, Prince? Your your idea is that like I I know you probably don't have to agree with someone one hundred percent, but like is were those comments like a, a hard cut off in that? okay, she's crossed my personal line, or? Well, so when it comes down to my case, like, you know, for, for starters, I try to, you know, consider, like, a lot of different things when it comes down to evaluation situations. For example, like, you know, well-being, as uh, well, I guess, you know, empathy and these other kind of things. And so, you know, it's not, of course, that long ago that's, of course, famous that many people who happen to be Christians tend to demonize gay people in the past. And when I see videos like that one, it's like a continuation of trying to say, you know what, you're bad because you're gay, and that's why I don't like you, and that's why your church needs to be burned down. And so when I watched that video, I but was... But where did Melanie Mack say that it's bad that you're gay? And you're yeah, it's, I, I, I think that you're making like, uh, this is what I don't yeah, like is that people take that and say like, oh, she hates gay people. Like, where is the assumption? She's very provocative with her statements. People? Like, basically, Melanie Max, a uh, thing is she says something provocative. Oh, sorry, it's just a prank, bro. It's just a prank, and then and then she kind of hides behind that. And I'm just not a fan of it. Do I want her canceled? No. Does she have a right to say what she says? Yes. You know, I'm not a fan of her, but I, but I'm not. I don't want her. You know, all this stuff. Let her, let her do what she wants. People like her. That's cool. Whatever. I don't have to like her. That's free country. See, I, I don't think uh, the, there's the the narrative that Melanie Mack is homophobic. I don't think makes uh, to me it doesn't make a whole lot of sense because she's no, not. She, she she doesn't attack gay people for being gay. Well, like, her whole stance is 
it's against the Bible. I'm a Christian, so therefore I don't agree with the lifestyle. But she also doesn't say that you're not allowed to be X, Y, Z, or that I'm not going to be friends with you because you're X, Y, Z. So I think yeah. that I think there's she's, a difference there. Like I, I she's I'm, not you know, homophobic, not the... but she go, go, clearly go. says stuff for shock value. She clearly uh, yeah. says stuff. She words stuff in a way to be incendiary and then hides behind it as a joke. And I'm just not a fan of that style of of uh, of, of of content. You know, she has a right to do what she wants. And, but I have a right not to listen if I don't want to. So Yeah, it's a free country. You can do whatever you want. It doesn't mean that she hates gay people. No, I'm not claiming that. I'm just saying he's, you know, very incendiary. So it, when, when you see, uh, you know, that Kotaku wants to write a hit piece on her and you know, and we know that she has a massive audience and we obviously we know about her views and even you know, and we don't even agree. A lot of us have different interpretations of her views. Mm -hmm. Um do you think this is going to be a, a win for Kotaku? Do you think this is going to uh, hurt? It's the... going to be a huge, big, fat L. Oh, no, okay, yeah. so even with your thoughts on Melanie Mack, you still think it's going to be an L for Kotaku? Please elaborate. I'm curious. Yeah, I, I would uh, think, you know, basically for the case, it could probably pull up videos like that and probably will say, well, you see, look at these people who support, like, you know, the bullet cutting, like, you know, sweet baby. They are anti-gay, and so they're going to probably paint people that way by using videos like that as ammunitions against people like me or you or everybody else in this panel. So like, even though I don't like her, I'm not saying she's saying anything wrong, you know, like she's not like, like, come on, like <laughs> there's nothing really they can pull up that really is cancelable in, in my opinion. You know, some people may not like how she does things. I may be one of them, but I'm not saying she's a bad person. You know, it's like I, I can have those two opinions both, you know, in, in perpetuity or whatever. Uh, to me, I think Kotaku just lose, not because of what Malik Mac is, but just because they're so incompetent, they'll just fall on themselves in general. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like if there's a race and Kotaku has to go against like a freaking stick, they'll still lose because they'll break their leg two seconds in. Yeah, probably. So, I mean, my, my thought when it comes to Kotaku going against, going against Melanie Mac. Um, my thought process is unlike Asmongold, a Asmongold, uh, I, I think was like the, the catalyst for this. We saw the entire internet reject their attempted hit piece on Asmongold. Like even people that don't like Asmongold were popping up in my comment section on my video on it being like, oh my God, they're, they're out of their minds. They're these game journalists they are they're going to go after easily one of the biggest names in gaming on the internet. Uh, and he doesn't really do collabs or anything to the extent, like once you go, once you go after Melanie Mack, she is part of a much larger, um, you know, group of content creators like, like that. That immediately is going to send people like the quartering and and the entire Friday Night Tights crew and um, the uh, side scrollers uh, people. Girl. Like you're you're opening uh, an entire. Uh, you, they're going to call the harassment campaign from an, from massive multi multi audiences that have crossover with one another. I do not see how Kotaku can look at this and think this is a good idea because. It, I don't think it's going to drive any traffic other than hate traffic. And hate traffic. So what you're saying is, this is not going to go the way you think. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I mean, so the, the debate we were having on Saturday Night Hypnosis was because Melanie Mack has stated she will talk with Alyssa Mercante. And everyone else will be like, no, don't do that. Rule one is do not talk to game journalists. And uh, <laughs> my thought process is actually, if anyone was going to talk with a game journalist, I kind of want it to be Melanie Mack. I think she's like the one individual that I think is the exception to this rule and that she could probably, because she's so divisive, expose Kotaku and their ilk even further. Like, like if somebody's so divisive like Melanie Mack, even they can make Kotaku look bad, that yeah. is the ultimate dub. That is the ultimate W. Now, I don't know if anyone's got I mean, thoughts on that, but I, I'm, I'm pro Mel. I think Melanie Mack should talk with Alyssa and should have, I think I this mean, Kotaku article should happen. She she can choose whether or not she wants to. I see an argument for both sides. I'm personally the type of person that I take people head on. So if you're going to try to make some kind of hit piece on me, I absolutely will talk to you and it'll be public and I'll laugh at you. So that would be what I would advocate for, but she's yeah. her own person. So whatever she decides to do, that's on her. I also get the validity of just, though. but I also get the validity of being like, you're not even worth my time. Like, okay, go do your thing. It's dumb because really like Kotaku writing a hit piece on you at this point is just an endorsement. Like no one takes Kotaku seriously. Well, so, so let's it, be honest. I, I feel like I should, I feel like I should clarify real quick. Hold, hold on, hold on, Nick. I gotta clarify. This isn't just Kotaku writing a hit piece. If if what we're seeing on X is correct, Melanie is actually going to sit down for an interview with her. 
Right. I, I mean, if she wants to, why not? I mean, I, okay. I don't see an issue with her I, I just want to make sure because some people are like, oh, we'll write a hit piece about XYZ and then never talk about them. A lot of people are worried that Melanie's going to go in and say ridiculous shit that can be literally quoted and that that's going to be a net negative. Well, yeah. Have I mean, you seen the happen- ridiculous articles that Kotaku writes regardless? It doesn't matter what she says. They're going to yeah. write something ridiculous regardless. All I would say, and I advise everyone always keep receipts of everything you say. Don't say anything you wouldn't want out there. That's it. Like, keep the email chain. If it's a, if it's an audio interview, record your own version. So that way when the edited version comes out, you drop your own version. Clarifies exactly what you said. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, 100%. I, I got to disagree with Kobanizer real quick, though. He says engagement is engagement, whether it's positive or not. Not on mm. uh, it, on things like YouTube and whatnot, yes. But on uh, Kotaku, which is a website you have to click to, and then they're funded by ads. So if you're just getting negative engagement, like people, like content creators, for example, clicking the article and reading it for videos, none of us are, are fucking clicking ads. Therefore, it's not generating any revenue for the, mm. for the website. So, yeah, it might draw traffic engagement, but it won't actually make them money. So... As opposed to positive engagement might make them money. Yeah. You, you I, guys know, like, I just wanted to, to note that comment. I've never really believed in stoking the hate fire anyway, because I believe it's like temporary at best. And when you're done, it's, it's like I, I, I try to be positive with my stuff because um, I feel like, you know, just generating outrage. It's like, yeah, you get a lot of temporary engagement, but it's but it's temporary. You know, and just like you have to keep stoking the fire, and it's just I don't know, it's just self destructive. And, and how is she generating outrage if this person's coming after her? She's just taking a response to somebody saying they're writing a hit piece on her. I'm not claiming that. Well, and I'm just, I, it sounded like you were saying you don't want to stoke the flames. In my opinion, Melanie Mack responding to any of this wouldn't be stoking the flames if that's what you're saying. I'm just talking in general of like people who just, you know, farm outrage or whatever, whether it be Alyssa or other people. Yeah, okay. I thought the yeah, question was like, about Melanie Max response. That's why I responded that way. Oh, no. I was just more speaking in a broader sense. Uh, yeah, no, I feel I, like, you know, farming, yeah, you know, drama farming that. stuff, that can only, like, only really work, like, a, as Nick said, a very short amount of time. Because after a while, you know, most regular yeah. people just kind of get bored of it, and then they'll just go and start going. They move on to the next okay. drama. Exactly. See, I, I in this instance, I disagree, though, because th- this is part of the larger Gamergate 2.0 situation that started. I, I remember uh, this started March 1st, I believe, like, like Gamergate 2.0, quote unquote, the, the Sweet Baby Ink Detective page started uh, gained notoriety, uh, notoriety March 1st. Here we are almost the end of the month. What is the last news story you guys have seen? consistently last for a month. I can only think of yeah. one in recent history. Most of them are out, got one and done in a week. Exactly. Yeah. Bud Light. This, the, the only thing that I can like, I, I, yeah. Bud Light lasted, Bud Light lasted, technically you could say Bud Light's still lasting in terms of the financial effects, but in terms of news coverage, Bud Light was like a three month long story. We mm-hmm. are now talking about uh, a video game, you know, Gamergate 2.0, which this is, a, this is a part of, and here we are a month later, it's still going on, and it's also showing no signs of slowing down. For the last two weeks, all my videos, but like two or three, have just by chance been video uh, Gamergate related because that's what's going on in the news, and they are mm-hmm. all still hitting thousands of views. People are not they, – they are continuing to click on this. They're continuing to, to read the articles. Well, they're the- continuing to have opinions on X. I don't see this slowing down. So so when, when Melanie goes in and she potentially does an, an, art, or an interview with Kotaku – this is not a one and done uh, news story that people are going to forget in a week. This is going to be part of the larger overall narrative that's been ongoing for the last month and is showing no signs of slowing down. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it, the thing that's really keeping it in it is those new developments. And this Melanie Mac situation is just another stepping stone in it. So it's just keeping the narrative, the, the, the whole thing going for however much longer. And maybe something else will come up. So that's, in my opinion, that's what's keeping it going is it's just constantly new developments. I mean, and that's how Bud Light worked as well. He's like, oh, hey, look, Bud Light hosted uh, D- Dilla Mulvaney. And then, oh, look at that. Bud Light lost a million dollars. And then ne- next development is, oh, we saw the, the CEO le- – or not CEO. The um, the marketing lady uh, was making those comments about uh, uh, fr- you know, frat boys and drinking. And then the new development, oh, look at that. She was caught drinking at frat parties when she was younger. Like, it kept snowballing. Like, I, I, mm-hmm. And that's just Bud Light. That, that's a single beer. Video games are the largest entertainment industry in the world. I don't think we're going to see a slowdown of new developments for a long fucking time. No. You know, like, the movie industry is is in a really real place. Like, their numbers are down. Like, sure, you're getting some hits, but, like, 
the engagement, like the Oscars have been like having really bad ratings. Like all the other, like video games make more than all the other industries combined. And it took until like a few years ago for mainstream to really take notice. See, I, I did it because I mean, I, I could be wrong. I was there for game, the first Gamergate. Gate. Were, were any of you guys around on the internet? Yeah. Were doing things the first I was. So, 10 yeah, years ago at this point. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like people say that about, oh, they're just not taking notice. The, the mainstream media was reporting on Gamergate 10 years ago. Now they were reporting on a flawed, lying version of it that was put forth by the, the you know journalists at places like Kotaku. But the mainstream media was still reporting <laughs> uh, on the it. The literal prime MSNBC. minister of Canada denounced me for being a part of Gamergate. Not me personally, but anybody who was part of it. They lit- He literally made a speech in 2015 saying we need to denounce misogyny in gaming and Gamergate. Right, Ooh, so okay. like it's it's a that's a though. name I haven't heard in a long time. <laughs> I'm just saying. So when, yeah, when people, when yeah people no, you scare me for a second like, there, Cobb. Just about to think, oh my goodness, what do you do to make him so mad at you? <laughs> All of Canada hates you. How does that feel? Great, it feels like that would be the ultimate badge of honor. <laughs> it, it is the ultimate You're badge of off honor, Canada. But no, it's, but but to what you were saying though, Nick, when when people say things like. The, the media is finally taking notice, which is you know the, which is what Matt Walsh said, and the rest of us were like, "Are you fucking retarded?" Even <laughs> yeah. pe- people have been talking about this for a decade. Even I mean, you know, light light melee even case more said, than that. yeah, well, yeah, even more than that. So I I can't stand this narrative that it's just now getting mainstream attention. Like uh, when when Fox News and CNN and, and and all them were making were making segments on Gamergate ten years ago. Oh, when, or even when, before I mean, that, like. The, the Fox News is like, in Mass Effect 2, it is a sex simulator that you can have sex in any position you want. Or even going back to early 2000s with like the like Jack Thompson stoking the fires with GTA 3, GTA 4. Right here. Never mind announcing game devs banging journalists for positive reviews, which was absolutely happening. I mean, apparently, then, according to them, gamers are dead, so. I, I just... I, I I don't know. I can only when we talk about Melanie Mac because I think that this is going to be, I think there's going to be a few key points that are when it comes to Gamergate 2.0 that are going to be just remembered. Um, can we well, think one, of a better name? I gotta just say that like somebody come up with a better name. Gamergate 2.0 is like the most hilarious thing ever. And I call who's it around, Gamergate to Electric Boogaloo. No, that's, that's, yeah, that's what I sure, used to call it. Well, that's fine. Gamergate that's, to Electric that's Boogaloo. Joke. That's a joke. That's fine. That's what I'm trying to say is 10 years ago, everyone tr- kept trying to revive it and revive it and revive it. First of all, the ride never fucking ends. <laughs> but everyone is keeping like, okay, is Gamergate back? Is Gamergate back? So calling this Gamergate 2.0 is just hilarious to me. It'll never not Considering be. Considering it's really just been consistently, Gamergate's actually just been going on for 10 years. Like, actually, it, it, never, it never really stopped. That Sweet Baby Ink was actually birthed from, like, isn't like the lore of Sweet Baby Ink is like, one of the guys committed suicide, and like the money was used to create uh, baby or something. Uh, Am I that's wrong? A different uh, sort of. There's a few. There's a few extra steps there. So, um, so Zoe Quinn's uh, boyfriend killed himself. Zoe Five uh, guys the, in the, back boy, the, the boy, the boyfriend's sister took Zoe Quinn's side. Used the money to start a a company called Weird Ghosts. Weird Ghosts went on to have a bunch of subsidiaries. One of them being Sweet Baby Inc. Uh-huh. Um, and so there's basically, you're right, but there's more, there's a few extra steps in between. It wasn't gotcha. just from Gamergate directly to Sweet Baby. Okay. I need to brush up on my lore, apparently. Yeah, it's, well, it, 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 it's amazing to me because people, they were doing this back, back in, uh, Gamergate 1, and, and they're doing it now as well. They keep calling Gamergate a, a far-right movement. People would see that, that, when people say that, it, that's what proves to me you weren't there for the original Gamergate mm-hmm. that you don't know, because most of the individuals that were calling out um, people like Zoe Quinn and Nita Zarkeesian were people on the left. Were people like Chris Reagan? Hashtag people, not your field. Yeah, p- people that were like, "Hey, by you being an insane left person, you're making us normal left leaning people look like right wingers." Well, it was a mix of everyone being in there when it was about ethics and game journalism, and then there was a lot of branches that spread off, and then there was a lot of infighting and people disagreeing mm-hmm. with each other, people thinking one side is too extreme, and it just like it was a bunch. So yeah, people can call it whatever they want, but there was people from every walk of life that initially were involved, and then people just kept splintering and getting mad. And I'm Gamergate. What Gamergate are you? Like yeah, that that meme. But I, 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 all in all, I just I find myself I don't know if I'm in the minority on this or not because there's been a lot of debate around it on X on various streams I've been on. A lot of people because because when Cabrutus uh, 
we, we all saw a couple weeks ago, Cabrutus was saying, hey, please don't talk to the media about this because they're going to twist it. They're going to take it. They're going to edit it. I think Cabrutus is, and, and people are using, you know, Gr- Grums was saying the same thing. People are using what Grums and Cabrutus say as a, uh, uh, as, as a point of agreement. It's like, yeah, they're correct. Don't talk with the media. And I feel like they're trying to blanket, establish, blanket use that for everybody when in all reality, there are some personalities in this modern day space I think should talk to the media. We already yeah. know they're going to run the hit, hit pieces anyway, so it can actually only be made better by actually talking to them. I think Melanie I, is one of those people. Yeah, because like, especially if it's like you know an audio interview where you have like an actual conversation, like that's your chance to kind of get some stuff in and like, like you know, make them kind of look like an idiot when you release the full audio. Uh, F- Future Boy says the diversity is great. The DEI pushed by people who are openly hostile to straight white males is the primary issue. And, and th- that's, that's another, I mean, again, that, that's an obvious thing, but that's an- another thing is that I've, it's it's one thing to to make a game, have your main character be a black hero or whatever. Like, like no one no one cares about that. And no, no one has ever cared about that. It's when you see these people behind the scenes actively say things like, we are making it our mission to erase straight white males as the default. That that shows you have an agenda, not that you actually care yeah. about creating games. Mm-hmm. People have like, a problem with this. this. The game's the so worst thing. The worst too. thing I can hear is we need to add some diversity. Like when you change the races, just for diversity. Like it's one thing if you have like a right actor for the right role. You know, like I always, I like you know, uh, Daredevil, uh, two thousand three. You know, my Clark Duncan's Kingpin. The more recent one, the Batman with 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 uh. With, uh, with, uh, I've gone on record Gordon. saying Michael Moore Duncan is my favorite version of the Kingpin. Yes, I do think he was better than Vincent D'Onofrio in the in the the modern recent Daredevil show. Yeah, um, they they didn't cast Michael Moore Duncan because he was black. Like to me, that is a perfect example of a race swap done properly. Now you can I argue mean, look at this, the scenes been done. behind the scenes. The director Mike Steven Johnson was like, he's got the size, he's got the presence. The only thing he's wrong is he got the skin color. Like, cast him because he had the size, the presence, and it right. works. Let's see, uh, yeah, I play a ton of games with no white dudes, but setting out to do that is weird. Like, are you okay? Is what Dempsey says. And d- dude, when I play World of Warcraft, I made me a fucking like, like dark skinned elf girl. <laughs> the very opposite of me. I'm a very if white. If you're gonna be staring at me for twenty like, two hundred hours, better be a nice ish. That's, well, that's I've said argument, it. Yeah. I've said it several times, and I'll say it again. It is not about diversity or inclusion. It is about elitism. It is about yeah. making your own in group the leaders of this to make money, to be on top. Um, and we see that's very clear when they get mad at people who don't agree with them, but who check every other box that should be on their side. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so here's my question for for the three of you guys on the bottom, the three non-white people here. Um, how, how do you, wow, how I feel do like that was a little bit wastefully ha- motivated. But. What? <laughs> no, I feel like that was a little bit wastefully motivated. <laughs> Look, Leon, I don't know, because apparently no. everyone on Twitter thinks I'm white now. They keep calling me, like, a pretty much a white person. So. Yeah, I've been seeing that a lot. Like, you've been, you've been getting, like, like majorly attacked for your, your view. People keep saying, don't listen to this white girl here or whatever, and your, your response is always... But I'm brown, like yeah. Well, it's 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 a, it's a power play because stripping you of your diversity status makes it easier to attack you. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's all power play. That's all it is. I, I don't even give a shit about my diversity status or whatever it might be. <laughs> like I really don't give a fuck. I like video games, and I'm willing to defend other gamers who are clearly being slandered. So well, th- th- that and that's why I was gonna ask you about because like for us, uh, I, I know I just find it fucking annoying. Like I was like, oh look at look, look at all this shit these Kotaku writers are saying. It's annoying. Uh, but I would imagine for for you three, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, or you can expand on this if you want. But like, do, I, I, do you feel like you're being used or, or worse that, that you that, like you're being weaponized because you uh, the reason you're on the show a lot of you guys I've, I've seen your videos you do not agree with this push this ideology um so it, it, do you take you know particular offense to the things that like kotaku and these other writers are saying i'm not yeah, personally sure. offended yeah. no sorry go on guys i keep talking i mean i me. i won't say offended but more like annoyed kind of like okay i know that you know of course out in public you're saying all this kind of stuff but with how a lot of these writers end up saying the public views, it's just like you have like some of the worst views possible. Like I've got I've got what happened, but like some law got passed, and there's one 
white woman white was like, yeah, I want to see how Republicans feel if their dog was raped by a bunch of black men. I'm just like, hey, yo. So <laughs> yeah, that kind of telling about what you secretly are thinking beneath all that, you know, strange diversity stuff. I Mask think a lot off. of the stemming from, exactly. A lot of it is stemming from people becoming like more eager to not think about themselves where they always want to see themselves in something and they can never step out of just being dumb. Because like, you know, as I mentioned before, I'm playing Baldur's Gate 3. Now, what do you think I'm playing as in freaking Baldur's Gate 3? You think I'm playing as a above six feet, beautiful black man with a tenant's dong? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, I'm playing as a freaking blue skin Goliath femboy who, who's a cleric. <laughs> yeah, I'm having fun. I can step up and recreate him. Yeah, you know, like... Always trying to make so for the record, you're not playing as Tyler. You're not playing as Tyler in the game. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, but the thing is, like, you know, I, I tend to agree because basically, like, all this sort of stuff about the race, I never really thought about it much until people just start talking about it online. So when I was growing up watching, like, you know, shows like DBZ, I didn't necessarily, you know, pay attention to the race of the characters because of the predominantly Asian cast. I was engaged in the characters because I thought the characters were interesting. It goes to every single last movie or game that I play. And so the people that seem to be assessed about the race the most <laughs> happens to not be like people like me, but like people who happen to be Caucasians, I notice. There are a lot of white knights okay, out there. I'm glad right you there. brought that up because it's always... A lot of beta males. It's always... Not, no, not even beta males. I mean, yeah, beta males too. Yeah, but like, if, what, you're, if you're a white dude, listen, alone. if you're a white dude and you're cucking that hard that you're crying over me and thinking that I should be offended, you're a beta male. I don't care. Well, no, 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 I, I, is, what, what I'm saying what's is, I on. see most of this coming from white women. Yeah, and they're also beta. <laughs> you oh, can okay. be a woman if you're beta enough. too. Fair, you can be enough. the way you whether you're male beta, or female. I simply is too male. I guess I'm a sexist. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, look at you. No. you know, the most annoying part is it's not like I don't mind it. Like, yeah, yeah, hey, you know, like Killer Beef Nato. You know, I love that guy. He's not my favorite character, but you know, I enjoy his presence. It's not like you know. I don't care if one ever gets added. You, you know, I enjoy it once in here and there. But like when it becomes like this real obsession to where it's like they're not there because there was an actually interesting idea there, but they're just there so that you know people just go like, "Hey, look, we got a black guy here. You guys can be a part of this now." I just kind of feel a little bit offended. Kind of just kind of just like, okay, number one, they even put like an actually interesting story there, and number two, it's like, okay, so like what do you just think that? If he wasn't there between everything else you guys had, I just wouldn't look your way. I just kind of... It's like dangling keys, like they're dangling keys in front of a toddler. Like, hey, hey, look, diversity, 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 please care, please care. Exactly. So I, I'm going to pull up this clip from X-Men 97 because I think it sort of encapsulates this perfectly. So um, we got this here, if you guys haven't seen it. Hurt my friends. Well, now you answer to me. Where is you the... Hold on, it's not no. showing the screen for some reason. Let me... Let me fix that. Yeah, I can Why see it. it. I see it on I can my see it right here. Can you? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now it is. I guess there was just a delay on my stream yard. It's not my bad. Now you answer to me. You managed to answer to no one. No one I hate about your kind. You act like you got it so bad. Normal people have it hard too. Harder. We just have the dignity not to whine about it. You see? It's the whining. I hate your whining just as much as I hate you. Also, why is he using an X Buster? So, real quick. Magnet, so we're gonna, <laughs> what, white homeboy here, the fact that every marginalized person has heard some variation of this. Now, dude, th this to me is the dumbest form of engagement rage bait farming. Like, okay, I guess you're gay because you got a fucking flag in your bio. I'm be real, dude. I I doubt that you got like, in. I don't think anyone's ever. He probably supports the current thing. He supports. Listen, the Leon. Thing. This yeah. event literally happened to me. Mega Man came up to me and started beating me up and said, "You know what I hate about you," and it, it was a whole thing. So this is definitely. Yeah. Real. yeah the first and, and then and then I did and not then absorb Psychos' powers. Yeah. And then exactly. I did not absorb Psychos' powers after I beat yeah. him. Like, oh, people people were having the debate on X-Men 97 of whether that whole um, 
insurrection thing was was you know i i don't think so i i don't think x-men 97 never recent, mind um, it's directly adapted from the comics but hey who cares right right i don't think exactly. that was the, but this on the other hand i watched i see this scene i'm like okay they're trying to fucking send a message with this statement because this is the most it, it, it's like what daxnar says he says that wasn't on the nose that was up the nose you can always tell when they're sending a message when it's not written well when it's so cringy and on the like on the nose it's like they, like okay don't care about writing it well we just want the message yeah, yeah basically. Oh, my, my initial thoughts when i saw that clip for the first time is like for starters i don't think the idea of comparing like the x-men to the mutants is actually like you know i mean sorry like humans like minorities to x-men is actually a good idea because <laughs> like in the clip he said like you know you have it so bad and you don't have it so bad in life well that's true because they basically have superpowers like he could use his laser anytime that he wants to, but he would not use the laser. <laughs> so that's the first thing. And also, besides the whole entire superpower ability, like how could it be all about race <laughs> when literally, like, this it's just it doesn't make any sense. I'm trying to gonna get, get myself right now, but go on, guys. And you know, this kind of don't work when you realize that since Obo Magneto, a guy who tried to genocide the human race at least like four different times by now. It's kind of just Four like times yeah. this week. Four exactly. times this week. <laughs> so like it's kind of a little bit hard to just act like okay, yeah, just being unreasonable when it's like okay, so it's a it's a guy who yeah. in his thirties would throw out his kneecaps if he carries something a little bit too heavy versus the guy who will send all your nuclear weapons back at you because he's a little bit pissed over being Jewish like sixty years ago. It's like eh, you know, it's a little bit hard to say that they're being a little bit pedantic. It's just one of those things like in the comics where there was this one case where a kid basically wiped out an entire town of people by mistake with his mutant powers. And, oh, the Stafford you know, we'll, incident. Right? Also, yeah, and then like, we had to kill him in secret so that they never found out that mutant did that. I'm just like, okay, you guys, it's kind of the work because you kind of just saying there is a little bit of a reason to have also, some. Also, like, you know, the whole mi minority comparison doesn't work also because basically <laughs> for the case of the mutants, you are you have to have good reasons to be afraid of them because they have, like, these superpowers to kill you. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't see how it could possibly work to compare the minorities to mutants. So, Well, I, I haven't I watched the show, but Melee Game says X-Men 97 is hyper-political. The messaging is not subtle all throughout the show. Uh, has anybody watched the show to, to, to verify that or have opinions on it? Because I mean, yeah, I'm not going to be watching it purely because it's, it's Disney. I've watched I'm going to just binge it. I, I mean, I hit up Jack Sparrow to supply me with the episode. So, um, I yeah, it's on the nose. I, I enjoyed it for the most part. Um, the, the messaging is, is, is on the nose, but I do find some value in it. But, you know, whatever. My messaging so, is like even the least issue out of all of it. It's just poorly animated, and some of the that's what I don't like about the clips I've seen is it looks like shit visually. It, it, yeah, the action it looks scenes like are garbage. okay. The action, like it's got kind yes. of a Ruby syndrome to it, where like there is the action one, scenes. Yeah, oh, like man. you're saying, there is one fight scene that is fine. I was like, okay, yeah, it actually looks okay. And then you get into like the nightclub, and Jubilee is doing this, but like the way that they do it is like they're moving their cursor to like move a still image of them moving, and it's like. What is wrong with you? You can't even do basic And, and the way they walk, it's like they do this an animation walk where they just turn the shoulders like this, and it's like, oh, we're walking. You know, I, I hate it when, like, yeah, when it's... when students do that. How hard would it so be to just fucking draw it? Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's drives me nuts. So Why do we need a CGI no. follow-up to something that's... I know it's called X-Men 97, but it doesn't need to look like Reboot, which came out in 97. Like Reboot looks better. Reboot looks better. No, reboot looks better. But I will say, um, I don't really want to spoil unless we're allowed to spoil. But I can I tell you what my number one issue is. Nobody else on the panel does. Okay, I'm well, guys, I'm going to spoil something. So I'm going to give five seconds for anyone who does not want spoilers. Um, my number one issue. There you go. The countdown. Perfect. My number one issue with this is that uh, at one point, uh, Jean Grey is pregnant and she's about to give birth. And the doctor says, oh, I'm not doing it for mutants or whatever. It does a whole like, you know, classic whatever story of like, I'm not helping your kind. And then Rogue takes off her glove and absorbs that doctor and then is able to help her give birth. Now, this is not how Rogue's powers work. There's the argument that like she's taking the memories of the doctor, whatever it might be. But she literally touches this doctor. He's still alive. 
And then all of a sudden, like she's directing people like she is a doctor and is able to do the whole thing. It's just not how yeah, women can't be doctors. But we she all absorbs this, so. the superpowers. She's absorbing the doctor superpower with the doctor superpower is doctorism. Well, I keep making the joke that she just absorbed the man's PhD. Like it's just so silly <laughs> in the way that it happened. So that that is yeah, my but, biggest problem yeah. with it. To be fair, this isn't anything new. Do you guys remember in, in X-Men Days of Future Past, like the live action movie, which to be fair is one of the better X-Men movies, fucking Kitty Pride inexplicably has now like mind powers that can send Wolverine and them back to the fucking past. I'm like, wait a sec. Wasn't that in the Shadow Cat can never do that shit. Well, um, actually, no, Shadow I think Cat it was Mrs. Can. Destiny. In the, in the original Days of Future Past, she did have time travel powers to go back to her body. Like, right. And correct me if I'm wrong. Like that in the original, she did have some version of it. Yeah, it, I thought it, that was just it, um, it, it, Destiny movie, helping her do that. That yeah, it, in the it, it was just super funny. I remember watching that. watching that movie in the theaters and being like, K "Kitty Pride doesn't have those powers. What the fuck?" Because in the original Days of Future Past, I'm pretty sure Kitty Pride and, and Wolverine are like the only one of the only two survivors that, and they both get sent back to the past together. It's been a while since I've read it, but let's see, uh, <laughs> it works with quantum entanglement. Um, are you sure Psychopop Blast has enough power to destroy the, the morphing? Oh, oh, they were asked. Someone was asking in the chat earlier who would win. Um, uh, I think it was like uh, Tommy the Green Ranger versus Cyclops. I don't know why that comparison yeah. came up, but I don't even know how to begin with that. I know um, to contemplate Cyclops that one in my life now. I don't know. Well, here's what would happen: is Cyclops if Cyclops used his full power blast on Tommy, it would the basically it would de demorph him because like, whenever Power Ranger like when it overloads him. It, they just kind of demorph, like they lose their powers, you know, because it's a protective thing. But after that, he's kind of fucked. Guess what? Works we're, we're, for me. Like I said, I uh, it's been many, many years since I watched Power Rangers, so I can't pretend to be an expert or whatot. I just, I just always assume. Hey, I'm a Power Rangers fan, have, so I'm, X Men I'm have actual superpowers. I would imagine that X Men would win. So, uh, <laughs> well, the thing is, the, the thing is, uh, Cyclops is blast. I think it's once been described. He could punch a hole through a mountain if he wanted to. So I think he could probably slice the dragon sword in two if he wanted. So, so wait, so, so you're telling me Cyclops Blast is only as powerful as like Yu Yu Hakusho, as Yusuke Urameshi's fucking finger gun? Oh my <laughs> like, god! Like, I mean, we know power levels are relevant anyway. So, true. All right, let's let's talk about Pokemon and uh, well, before that, it looks you you finally sent the um uh uh links I asked for hero. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So I'm like a while. Okay, let's talk about let's talk about your Kickstarter a little bit here. Then uh, it's also on Fun My Comic. Let's let's talk about your Kickstarter because I uh, I want to to you know share individuals that do actually want to contribute to you know contribute to building a parallel economy. So this is Storm Rail Riders number one. Tell us a bit about your book here. Obviously, it's inspired by Jet Set Radio, which is a great thing to immediately be inspired <laughs> by because Jet Set Radio is a fucking classic. But uh, yeah, tell us oh, a bit more. Sure. So, yeah, you know, of course, like uh, a big thing about this series is, you know, just about defining your own freedom and stuff. Because, you know, of course, with a lot of these punk rebellion, you know, free writing stuff, a lot of it is about, you know, of course, a little bit of rebellion feeling, a little bit of freedom. But the main thing about this series is about defining your own freedom. And, you know, of course, that can take a lot of different meaning because, you know, of course, as a base personality a lot of people want to be free to mind means or another but as you grow up you kind of have to find out what that means and for this series it follows this one guy he's a more recent or i think he's still in college uh college graduate and basically you know of course uh these two crews were fighting one night and he accidentally got caught up in the middle of it and then one of the crews robs him and steals something important to him and so you know of course a little bit later the other crew one of them goes back to find them and, you know, they kind of like to apologize to him because it's, you know, they kind of feel bad that, okay, yeah, they got caught up in this and such. And so, you know, of course, as they were talking, the leader was just like, okay, you know, we could just get it back for you, but do you truly just want that? And then it kind of just goes into a thing of they're trying to give him a chance to, for him to actually get it back himself through his own means and such and giving him a way to take back control of his life by being able to, we claim what his law. So that's like a big theme of Storm of Riding and such. And yeah, of course, now, you know, just tell, tell us about the so art. Did you did you draw the art or did you hire an artist or um for both series? I'm I'm just a writer for it. Yeah, you know, I'm just writer okay. editing. I just recruit the people for it. And for okay. this one, this is Relentlessly Boy the Hero. It's more about superheroes and such. 
Okay. It's more about superheroes and such. And for this one is basically recently um the star here of a city. So like, you know, if Metropolis lost Superman or Gotham lost Batman, you know, he died more recently. So now a new generation of heroes are, you know, wise enough to step up. And one of them is Zeal. But unfortunately, he ends up in a biting deal with a villain. And C is utterly bored with her life, so she just spends her day just constantly mess with him. So <laughs> while he's trying right, to like ahead. help people, let's, let's, let's this. so I, so Storm Rail Riders is, isn't connected at all to uh, the relentlessly bullied hero. You've got two separate books going. Is that what it is? Yes. Okay. Let's watch the trailer for Relentlessly Bullied Hero. We can't hear the audio. It's muted. Yes. Yeah, uh, no, oh, we can't hear the audio. It's, it's not muted here with audio. Yeah, no. Streamyard has been doing this dumb thing where it's it's not sharing audio. Uh, let me refresh. You gotta and try check it the again. box. You gotta check the box. All right. Yeah, when you when you uh, share the thing, make sure to check the box here with audio. Yeah, let me make sure that let's stop sharing and share it again. One sec. Yep. But yeah, I guess while we wait. So yeah, this is the second chance campaign. I did the first one on Kickstarter, massive success. So this is just a second chance campaign for anyone who missed the first one, because why not? I'm generous. <laughs> All right. Does it does it have audio now? Nope. No, no audio. Uh, what the hell? Why is it not no sharing? No audio. Hmm. What is this thing doing? Oh, well, we may not end up watching the trailer then. I apologize for that. Um and we could always admire the pretty pictures. Yeah, Maybe instead it, of I mean, the embed, why don't you do just like the direct YouTube video? Like, just go take. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Okay, good, good call. Let's... See, because I've definitely work. got share with audio on. All right, share this tab instead. Through injury madness. Here now. Yeah, here we go. A hero shall step song with the website. And lay their body on the line like those before. Them. We may fail, but we will never stand down, for it is through our valor and will that society will be purified for a better tomorrow. <laughs> oh, God, I couldn't hold it in. What is this, Zeal? Your first draft? It's worded so weirdly. And haven't you ever heard of a word limit? Gotta make it snappy and interesting. Let me show you how it's done. Greetings, peasants. The great villainess, cursed sorcerer, Grimora is speaking. Welcome to the show of my creation. Featuring Zeal, the hero of our story. Say hi, Zeal. <coughs> Fantastic. He's a very odd new gen hero I came across and claims he can return heroism to its once prestigious state compared to its current degenerating from. Hard pressed to believe from his general lack of abilities, but hey, he has spirit. Who doesn't want to see an underdog story? And if he fails, it'll be hella fun to witness. Coming this. Zeal, when is this campaign starting again? Yeah, late January. It's starting late January 2024. And of course it wasn't finished. You just jumped me and stole my journal, you freaking sociopath. We've got it all. Violence, explosions, my sexy self. So go, give me your money. You vile woman! You think this is funny? There's no games here, witch! This town's diseased! <laughs> it's deep into the soul and my crusade shall chip it away piece by piece! I swear, by my flesh and bone, I shall- Enough of that. The gag goes back on. Wait, 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 wait. this is my story, isn't it? Why am I playing second fiddle here? There'll be plenty of cool stuff, so go spend your money on relentlessly bullied hero. Hashtag one. Any parting words? Zeal? Really? Well, I stole my hero's mission statement too. Psych. <laughs> oh, I love I love that. I love that trailer. I love the art style. Oh, thank yeah, you. Yeah, so, yeah, as like you can tell, tell, his life is a living hell. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the idea of telling a relentlessly bullied hero then have him bully in the trailer is actually pretty fucking good. It, it, it took me a set to catch on what was happening, then I was like, okay, that was that was well done. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. It's about the quote center Armstrong. So yeah, guys, uh, there's <laughs> first campaigns. Um, there, there's Relentless Hero. There, there's so you don't you do not have a trailer for Storm Rail Riders, correct? That one, uh, is, not yet. I got something that, special. That looks like that hasn't been launched at all. Nope, it's launching okay. this spring. Oh, it's launching this Friday. Awesome. So do, do you have any idea of what spring, the are gonna not be? Friday? Spring. <laughs> Let's play it again. 
I said lots in the spring. Oh, the spring. I'm sorry. Okay. Do you have, do you have any idea on what like the tiers are going to be or, or anything to that effect? Um, you know, these link bases stuff. You know, about one, two, two or three covers. I don't like having too many covers because I feel like that kind of devalues the covers to what is it they're tied to. So yeah, like two or three. You know, of course, some posters, some stickers, maybe a bookmark. I'm still kind of working out the details of how to do, you know, something a little bit special specifically. Like for Valencia Bullet Hill, I had a tier where they could, you know, um, basically submit a heel design that will show up at the end with all the rest of the characters and such. And so, you know, for this one, I'm still kind of thinking about what I can do for that one as I'm – I'm I'm what you call a little bit lazy, so I'm always just <laughs> thinking, okay, what can I do, and then what can I reasonably keep up with? I don't want to make a promise with it, and then all of a sudden, you know, when I had to start doing it, it's becomes a lot more complicated, and you know, all that stuff. So I'm like, okay, I gotta make sure that's something I can do and it's possible. I'm not just you know blowing smoke off my own neighborhood. Well, awesome. Well, we will definitely we'll, we'll go back to it uh, before the show ends. We'll do one more setup for it. But yeah, guys. So these are two separate right now. So uh, relentlessly bullied hero is uh, available for pre order. It is um, I, I don't know pre order is the right word or whatnot, but uh, it looks like the digital copy is. It's not sharing the screen again. Sorry, uh, Streamyard been being a bitch lately. Let's try this one more time. Show this off. There we go. The digital copy is seventy dollars. Seven seven dollars, not seventy. Seven dollars. <laughs> uh, it's got a fourteen dollar um physical copy of cover A, uh, twenty dollar physical uh, cover B spotlight edition. Seventeen dollar is cover C. Let me be real. I think then cover B is gonna be the way to go, folks. Um, yeah, a lot of people like it. You know, the funniest part is I made it the price kind of as a joke because just like. Yeah, and yeah, I think she's so popular. People will be willing to spend an extra five bucks over her. Yeah, because, because the main you guy, know, se but. sexy characters sell like it's it's truly. Really, and then you can get all three uh, plus a digital book, uh, digital card pack, physical card pack, and trading card for forty five. I think these are all very fair. Uh, three dollars is a bookmark. A uh, quick question: Like, are those covers like hardback or like paperback? Uh. See, I forgot what it was. Square bound glue binding. It's off of the comic wellspring one. So I'm pretty sure it's gonna be. It's not gonna be a floppy, but one of those square bound books. So it, it's more. So it, it's um. It's not hardback, but it's like the thickness of like um. It's perfect bound. That's what they're. That's what you're yeah, talking about. Perfect perfect. Yeah, perfect Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So yeah, one right. of those. Also, books. I I I do comic wellspring from all, all my stuff. They do really good work. And then I know people are going to ask, so I'll ask right now: uh, Is there AI art involved? Uh, nope. I think we know. <laughs> yeah, I pay out of pocket for every single artist, so yeah. If I'm already putting in that much money, I might as well just go all the way through because yeah. I do not. Like I said, I'm a little bit lazy, so I do not feel like going through all the drama because I decide to use. Right, <laughs> so yeah, it's I mean, not worth it. I mean, I, exactly. I, I'm a supporter of AI art, but I also don't necessarily want to like. Buy Kickstarters for things that are AI art, unless there's a really good reason to. So, like, do it, do an AI art and just putting it on, on on thumbnails for videos. Like, I'll use AI for my thumbnails just because it, it's you know simplicity sake. But I wouldn't want to pay you know thirty dollars for a comic book that's AI art. You know, so yeah. Yeah, I, I think there's a middle ground there. So, yeah, I, I think people are going to enjoy it. Um, I dropped the links in the chat. There are also links uh, in the description of the video. And uh, yeah, dude, I, I appreciate you coming on. I, we'll, we'll talk about more near the end of the stream as well. We got about a little over an hour left, and um, Nick brought up Pokemon, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about that. Mm. Pokemon Equity and Diversity only on Switch <laughs> Two. So, uh, Director of Diversity, <laughs> Equity, and Inclusion on Social Responsibility at the Pokemon Company International. The Pokemon Company International, a subsidiary of the Pokemon Company in Japan, manages property outside of Asia and is responsible for brand management, licensing, marketing, the Pokemon trading card game, the animated TV series, Home Entertainment, and the official Pokemon website. Pokemon was launched in Japan in 96, and today is one of the most popular children's entertainment properties in the world. Get to know the role. The job title is Director of Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Social Responsibility. The Director of Diversity and uh, Job Summary um, facilitates and promotes the Pokemon Company International's global culture of innovation, diversity, equity, uh, yeah, equity, where I, I lost it because I'm dumb. Okay, inclusion and belonging. This role will partner with the DEISR team to build diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI, and social responsibility initiatives and programs to influence employment, engagement, talent acquisition, 
talent, talent management, charitable community engagement, and the marketplace, and it, it cuts off from there. But, uh, yeah, so it, I, I love the fact that this is for the Pokemon Company International. This is not for their Japanese branch. This is not for their Japanese branding. They, they, they have been infected by the ideology that outside the West, people give a shit about, or outside the East, people give a shit about this stuff. The world virus is spreading. Oh, no. Well, I mean, this yeah. is based in Seattle, pretty much. Uh, so I'm not surprised at all. California light. Yeah. <laughs> the last time I heard about Pokemon, honestly, was like when I was a kid. <laughs> Back during the 90s, when that was like really, really popular together with Yu-Gi-Oh! And I remember, of course, people just buying all these cars <laughs> growing up. And oh, so God, I remember that. Playground yeah. And, and so I guess listening to this news right now, now that I'm 31, is like, wait a second. <laughs> what do they need to approve on for Pokemon? <laughs> like, well, I, I will show you an example of it. So if we look right here, because this is already happening on Pokemon Go, they've completely redesigned the female avatar. And uh, notice how she no longer has a hip cock. They've definitely de emphasized the breasts. And most importantly, they've given her the Mary Jane Spider Man 2 jawline. He's, uh, uh, he's seeking the Forbidden West. <laughs> yeah, yes. it, there's there's pages of these. If you, if you go to, to uh, X and just type it in, like, um, let's see, we, we saw several them on Saturday night. I noticed the other night. Let's see. Apparently, the, the, here, here we go. Here's like... a great comparison. The, again, no, oh, notable. Wow. Notable difference and no, notable ugliness. <laughs> okay. Apparently, they're allergic to thigh gaps. Let's see. Oh, here. Let's go to. Let's go to media. So we can just find photos doing it that way. It's just like modern body type one, body type two type garbage that you're starting to see slowly get into everything. See the problem. Yeah. Here's the problem. Um, girls like sexy girls as well. Like like. Just look at like some of the art by by women. Like it is like hot. Like I've seen some like a lot of the sexy girl stuff is drawn by women. So, I mean, yeah. every single female I have on my show says the exact same thing: is that women want sexy female characters. And we saw proof of this when Victoria's Secret started catering to fat bitches, and then they lost a million dollars or millions of dollars, and said, "Hey." We're no longer going to cater to fat bitches, and lo and behold, women start shopping at Victoria's Secret again. <laughs> like, yeah, oh, they like, got, they got the like, skinny, skinny girls again. Oh, oh, we can go shop her again. Yeah, like I feel like the brains behind a lot of these decisions are people who got mad over a lot of, uh, let's say, attractive women always getting a lot of their attention, so they got mad, and now I want to make all games be like below a five. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm like, that, oh, I'm what is it? Uh, photo examples as I was on Saturday night. I wonder what's going on with that because there was yeah. X was loaded with photo examples the other day. Yeah, can you know, like again, like okay, yeah, not every woman to exist is gonna be a 10, but to take out literally like 99% of them, ah, uh, that, that feels a little bit, a little bit telling. People like, put, looking like at pretty things, who knew? Exactly. Well, it, it's the it's problem like, with the androgyny, like the androgyny bothers the shit out of me because. The, the moment you start taking away, let, let's say the feminists were right. Let, let, let's give credit to feminists for a little bit and be like, hey, there yeah. aren't enough female characters in games. Then all of a sudden, hey, look at all this. Now we have female characters. And now like, hey, those female characters you guys love so much, let's make them look like dudes. Like, hold on a sec. Where do you fall on your feminism spectrum here? What happened? Hey, wait a minute. Who are you? <laughs> yeah, uh, like all this stuff kind of just reminded me of this one conversation I had with someone like a while ago, where it's like, yeah, I made like a sex joke, a sex joke, and they didn't get at first, <laughs> even though it was like really blatant. It. And then literally right afterwards, they were just like, well, I mean, I would have gotten it, but you know, I haven't had much experience. All the guys only want Bobby girls, and I was just like, hey, yo, that feels like a lot of strange trauma dumping just over not getting a sex joke. Like, hey, you know, it's not that serious, but. I feel like now a lot of these people got that mindset to where like they're pissed off over something in high school and now they want to make so, it everyone else's problem. Here, here's more information on the, the DEI position. An employee first culture uh, is what to expect. An employee first culture, company events that celebrate the spirit of Pokemon, competitive cash-based compensation programs, base salary range. For this role, new hires generally start between 178000 and 211850 The full range is 178000 to 267000 This range is applicable for the labor market where the role is intended to be hired. Final base salary is directly related to each candidate's qualifications and professional experience uniquely. 100% employer-paid healthcare premiums, generous paid family leave. So what really matters here is 
the 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 you know the salary. Like people are gonna be paid up to two hundred eleven thousand dollars, or honestly, even on the low end, one hundred seventy eight thousand dollars for saying this shit isn't black enough or this shit isn't Asian enough or this shit isn't female <laughs> enough. Like hell for that much money. I, I'll, I'll cuck out. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> he says that there, yeah. There's the line. You would sell your morals for $178,000 a year. We know. Hey, I've already uh, sold my soul to the company store. So it's all good. I guess I'm just trying to figure out what exactly are they buying for this dollar amount? Cause that's a huge dollar amount, of course. And like, it's always vague. It's like, yeah, we're going to add diversity inclusion, whatever. Are you adding it to the product? How much does the Seattle team have impact on the actual product itself coming out of Japan is the other question. Like wh what impact is this person going to have? Oh yeah. The West likes diversity in quote unquote. I mean, it's not true, obviously, but uh, is that all they're going to advocate for? And then Japan be like, okay, that's nice. And keep building the product the way they want to. I mean, well, let's be honest. This job like, is probably going to go to someone's like, son, like, like an executive, son, like son or daughter or nephew or niece or whatever. This is like one of those fluff jobs they they show people in who have no no idea what they're doing. The thing about but, Pokemon, but you, like you say that, but it's oh, so no, no, go go for it, bud. Yeah, yeah. So the thing about Pokemon, like I remember back in the past when I was a kid, there was like a humongous controversy about the whole entire rice cake thing, <laughs> where basically they <laughs> oh, you don't like jelly donuts. Yeah, to jelly donuts, yeah. <laughs> so it kind of feels like this exact same thing that the right was, you know, complaining about Pokemon, but now is now focused more <laughs> on the left with this thing. So, well, it, it, that's not just Pokemon. This is something that's been the case that, that I've noticed for years now. All the things that, that the people on the right were complaining about in terms of video games in general are now being complained about by the left. And to be fair, back in the day, back when, you know, in the 90s when Columbine and all that happened, the right and the left were actually pretty unified on that shit that, hey, video games cause gun violence or whatever. Because, I mean, Tipper Gore brought that to the case. And Tipper Gore ain't no fucking Republican. So it, it's, it's... I mean, Tipper Gore's been at this... Uh been at this media shit since the 80s like you remember the hearings on metal back in the yeah. 80s where uh d snyder basically insinuated that tipper gore was was into bdsm i've i've, I've watched that court proceeding so many it's times beautiful. it's beautiful it's so beautiful Dude, d, d snyder's owned that shit it's so sad to see where what he's, what he's saying yeah now. he's cucked out pretty bad but yeah but just it blows my mind because pokemon i i don't know what this job, like, like you know, uh, Melee K was saying, what would this job entail? Because Pokemon's already incredibly diverse. Like, it always has been. Like, it, you turn on Pokemon games, they've had, you know, uh, characters that are, that are of different ethnicities. You watch the anime, they have characters that are of different ethnicities. Like, it's a children's show about, you know, lo low, like, uh, low intelligence Michael Vick style things. I don't get, oh my God. There, there's... Is there like people in the, in the black community saying Pokemon cards are too expensive? Why can only white kids afford them? Like I don't. I get never, I've never seen actually. people say like I remember like one of my cousins. He had like a whole entire collection, not necessarily Pokemon cards per se, but a collection of these Yu-Gi-Oh cards back in the day. So I don't think it's not necessarily a question about the cards being too expensive. I don't. I don't remember anybody. I, I was being facetious that. when I said that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm just yeah, trying to like it. also figure out is it like the company culture you're trying to change or the actual product like what is your are you an HR type role where you're like just putting your Maybe. employees through courses or are you like impacting product decisions it, it I don't think it's very clear besides I'm no, saying no, that it, they would it, touch it, it's like, more Brock, what do you yeah. put Brock on the cover like screw ass let's put Brock on the cover he's brought enough well, it says this role will partner with the DEISR team to build diversity equity inclusion and social responsibility initiatives and programs to influence employee engagement there talent acquisition talent management charitable community engagement and marketplace so it sounds like it's, it's supposed to be from within the company but then they say Gardevoir community about engagement about say that again is Gardevoir about to lecture me about feminism? Absolutely. Oh, Gardevoir's always been able to do I, that. I think what's but, more likely is that, like, maybe at these community events, they're going to be like, we're doing a night for black people in Pokemon or something. Like, more than it actually affecting the product. It sounds like this is, hey, we're going to teach our team how to be more inclusive, how to be more tolerant, whatever they want to say. And then maybe at their events, they might do like, oh, we'll do a women in Pokemon night or something. Like, it doesn't necessarily sound yeah. like they're touching the product. But either way, Wait, it's Melee. Down. To answer your question, you want Jinx original face back? Yes. I, sure. Why not? I don't care. Because her face is purple now. It has been since Gen 2. Yeah, and I thought it was dumb when they changed it. Who cares? Mom it's a Pokemon. 
Well, yeah, that's the weirdest thing. I'm just like, boy, you're looking at a Pokemon and going like, wow, so it's just me? It's like, okay, let's calm down a little. It's like when people like think that, about That Mr. says Pokemon. more about you than it says about Jinx, but okay. I don't know. It's so, like when people, you know, always put to, like, Mr. Popo. I'm like, Mr. Popo is a freaking genie. <laughs> Right. I'm just saying, you don't censor your products. Pro. At the end of the day, I'm a I'm a person that says don't censor your products. So yeah, it should go back to the original intent. So I mean, l l let's say that it is like like you were referring to it as as you know something like, hey, on on this event night, we're gonna have like you know a women in Pokemon sort of event. My question is, if this is if you're hiring for this now, if you're if you're gonna pay someone two hundred thousand dollars a year to to create events like this, were you having a problem before? Because let's be real, anytime corporations got scandals, that shit always comes out. We remember what happened to Blizzard in like 2019 or whatever when they when they're higher up for like fucking sweet. raping everybody. Like I sweet. never once heard about a scandal from within the Pokemon company. What I find interesting in this wording too is the talent acquisition. So what does that mean for hiring going forward? Are you going to no start doing things loud. where well, that's what I'm asking, right? It's like, are they gonna start doing these things where it's like this role is meant for BIPOC and this and blah blah blah? I don't know. It's hard to tell because this is so vague. This is a really generic like job posting. It could have been made by AI for all I know. Uh, Abomination AJ says Pokemon's fan base consists heavily of these DEI weirdos. I really, I, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, yeah. That that's. I want to say that surprises me, but actually, I can see that being the case because Pokemon is one of those things that you get into as a kid. And so now we have modern generations of children who are being raised in this DEI landscape, who probably are being preached this stuff in their schools. So it makes sense that Pokemon's fan base would actually be very, you know, uh, modern audience adjacent or whatever, because, well, it's aimed at kids and kids are being preached this out the womb. Screw well, Pokemon. A... I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give my kids copies of Power World now. There you go. Give them Digimon instead. <laughs> you gotta make them pro Digimon. Well, I mean, Pokemon's yes, got yes. such a huge fan base that like there's gonna be a lot of weird people that are fans too, right? Like, right. It's like it's like the biggest thing in pop culture. So of course, like you're gonna have. I mean, a it lot is of the highest grossing people. IP of all yeah. time. So yeah. There's probably a lot of furries too. I mean, that's a gift. Oh dear God! <laughs> no, no, no! He, he is, it, it, he it's just crazy me because since this is the largest IP in the world, that would imply that they have a global audience. And if you look at the globe, this is not normal. This ideology is really only limited to first world Western nations. So yeah, it's like exactly. whenever there's Pride Month, and it's like all of them turn rainbow except for the Middle East and Russia. Right. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, yeah. Digimon, digital monsters, Digimon, Digimon, digital all the monsters, champions. Digimon. Base all Digimon. Champions. I think Digimon's better than Pokemon. So oh, I just thought that out remember, there. remember a lot uh, of children's toys shows are targeting adults now because a lot of the woke don't have kids, but they do buy kids' toys for themselves. Yeah, that's a thing that's been happening a lot as well, which is strange to me. Like, so I, I, I'm a I'm a long time Sonic the Hedgehog fan. And uh, as, as you can see behind me, I'm not one of those weird DeviantArt fans. I'm a long time Sonic the Hedgehog fan. So when Netflix You're came out Chris with Sonic Chan. Boom, we get it. Show, You're not Chris Chan. I, uh, it. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Netflix came out with Sonic Boom. I watched it and I thought, this is not, not Sonic Boom, uh, Sonic Prime. And I watched it and I thought, this is very um, erratic. Like the way it's drawn, the way it's animated is very like goofy and wacky. And it was very much like, a, oh, this is a Gen Z version of Sonic the Hedgehog. I'm. I'm not really vibing with this. This this isn't this is not how Sonic should be. But then I also remembered I'm 30 fucking years old. Sonic is <laughs> probably different now than when I was a kid. Like But hey, Sonic so Boom. You mentioned Sonic Boom. That came out like what 2016 or something, and I love it. Yeah, Sonic I, I Boom Sonic Sonic was was Wasn't that the show where, where Knuckles was lecturing Amy Rose on feminism? Yes, it yes. was. Yes. Yeah. I've used I've used that clip in a few videos. I actually love that fucking clip. Oh, I want to get back to Digimon for a second. Did you guys see how the creator of Tamers made a play that a Digimon play about cancel culture and everyone lost their shit for like a hot second? No, this totally. I have not heard this at all. That sounds excellent. Yeah, uh, it was like some sort of, of uh, I think uh, a bunch of women doing that together for that one clip. I I I was, I was coughing. I have some allergies. Say that again. Yeah, I think it, for that one clip that she was talking about, it had like a bunch of women talking about the cancel culture, and they literally said cancel culture in English, I think. Yeah, cancel culture was the villain. I just linked up. Yeah. <laughs> I just linked that. I put a link. I'm, I'm pulling up the article on it right now. Give me one moment here. Share this tab instead. 
Uh, Digimon Tamer's 20th anniversary stage show features cancel culture villain. Oh my god. The Digi the Digifest 2021 event on Sunday featured a 20th anniversary stage show for Digimon Tamers, the third Digimon series. The show included a live script reading play with an original story serving as a sequel to Digimon Tamers set in the modern day. Notably, the story featured a number of politically charged words and themes, including political correctness and cancel culture. In the play, <laughs> teamers are reunited to fight against a new villain, which takes the form of political correctness. I so they made political Base! correctness. Wow. Base. Oh, this is uh, raise your kids on Digimon, folks. It threatens the real and digital worlds. Chief Officer Yamaki dramatically describes it as the greatest problem facing the internet and media because Thanks. it forces people to conform to a single value system and censors real news to replace them with fake news. God damn! It's coming from the mouth of a Japanese man! This play is on YouTube and it's translated in subtitles, so you can actually watch it. Although the tamers are initially... You gotta send me the link of that. Yamaki's Say that again? Um, oh, no, I was saying that. You gotta send me the link of it. Uh, let me let me try and find it. Um, yeah, they are shaken when political correctness takes on a physical form and launches into an attack. When Chika J. Kanaka, who worked on the screenplay of the original Digimon Tamers anime, confirmed on Twitter that he wrote this script reading play. So this isn't even like a fan thing. Like this is done by the actual dudes uh, oh. writers for Digimon. Okay, I have a seven seven second clip that uh, I have to show you guys. Um, let me. Uh, let me just, uh, okay. Um, right. So yeah, lay it on me. I will absolutely pop it on. In the meantime, I'm going to keep looking at this article. Uh, Kanaka has also been maintaining a retrospective blog for the series where he writes his recollections and thoughts about various episodes and other aspects of the anime. A number of posts have his thoughts on current technological landscape, including his beliefs around the suppression of alternative information <laughs> regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. Fucking... I, of, of course, Anime News Network would be throwing a fit about this because they're the ones out there that, you know, they started the initial campaign against Vic Mignogna. Like, Anime News Network is one of the most left-leaning pieces. Of sh oh, this is amazing. In a post from May, he wrote that when writing the original Digimon Tamer series, there were certain depictions of violence where they used guns that he avoided due to the political climate around 9-11 terrorist attack. Later in the 2010s, he began to look at the background behind the incident. Although he thought that early conspiracy theories were unrealistic and was critical about 9-11 truthers, he admitted to maintaining some suspicion around the circumstances Bates. in which the attack occurred. Holy shit, this dude is awesome! All right, all right. He drew a comparison to the year 2020, remarking that he saw the YouTuber James Corbett describe the situation as COVID 9 11. Corbett is a prominent 9 11 and COVID conspiracy proponent. Kanaka wrote that while he did not agree with everything Corbett said, he described him as someone who analyzed the situation rationally uh, and simply continued to sound the alarm around dangers, not just the illness, but the societal situation happening around the world. That is amazing. Have, have, you, have you sent that link yet? Yeah, it's already be shared. It's not in the pr uh, private chat. No, it's it's down it's down below. I have a clip that I've been presenting. Oh, oh, sorry, gotcha. Okay, let's stop sharing this. Here we go. Damn, and see, I, I was I was a Digimon fan growing up that liked Digimon more than Pokemon. I feel like I need to get Hell reinvested yeah. in the series now. So, like, <laughs> Digimon is the best. I'm telling you, I've always loved Digimon more. I just, I just didn't like it after season three. Once once uh yep. once they started turning into the Digimon, I was like, I fell off of it. But seasons one uh, one two and one two are great. Three is pretty good, but I, I didn't like the smaller cast. All right, I, I um let's see here. Apparently, the Wild Bun subject is like. This program promotes far right politics and spirit theories. It's just like, come on. Yeah, that's that's pretty amazing. I'm uh I'm pretty impressed. Um, what happened to the Building Seven Gaijin Sama? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's excellent. amazing. That's great. And, and why why can I just see like I I can just imagine an Evangelion episode about that or something. Wow, I'm I'm impressed. I just gotta say, I'm I'm impressed. Um, I'm gonna right, have to find that full thing. Uh, Pokemon. I think we pretty much covered Pokemon. Oh, have you seen? Have you guys seen the, the anti woke individuals fucking melting down over Dragon's Dogma implying they're gay? No. Right. This is. I, I've seen several <laughs> posts about this. This is funny as fuck. Hold on a sec. Um, I I've uh, let's see if I can find. This is the first one, but I've got a couple. Um, 
Looking around, it strikes me that we pawns are all men. I wonder if this speaks to Arison's preference. And refunded. I picked all men because they're better suited for combat, and the game calls me a faggot for it. What the fuck is their problem? <laughs> so <laughs> it's a common thing in Dragon's Dogma where if you have a group of all men, uh, they will they will you know make jokes about you being gay. And anti woke people are throwing a fit that they would be like I, again. I've seen like four or five different posts about this. I, I'm not gonna pretend it's a widespread issue, but it's super funny because if you choose a, a party with several women. It will they, they will say the same thing. Like the dialogue will say the same, but in reverse about women. So <laughs> I just the fact that they programmed that in there to, to allude that your character is gay is I thought that was funny as shit. That's a troll job. The most ambiguous sentence, and people are already raising a stink lamal. Yes, Arisen has a preference. The preference is absolutely beast warriors that will bonk everyone in existence. I I don't know what's funnier: the game saying this player might be gay, or the fact that somebody got upset about having specifically chosen that because rah rah men strong. Like it's, it's this is a case of pick your battles to me. I won't lie; I don't yeah. understand the Dragon's Dogma discourse. I think the Dragon's Dogma is. I I haven't played it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna play it just because. I, I, There's so many them. other things to drag that game for. The micro right, exactly. Like, I'm not devised mess. Like, there's so shit, many so other I'm things. Close. Yeah, I, I, I'm not gonna put this game on my PC uh, and then have it run like dog shit. Like that's just a, throwing seventy dollars yeah. away. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna the, the anti cheat stuff too. Like yeah, yeah, the, 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 the save the, files nine to revive nine cents them to revive files. Uh, Ironcaster says this isn't even mild. That sounds like someone who thinks onion is too spicy. <laughs> Damn! Imagine getting called a rump rancher by a video game. Ten out of ten worth the two dollars. I mean, Faggot yeah, the people. Dogma. If you think onions are too spicy, you must be British. <laughs> oh, dude, just okay, Dr Dragon's Dogma has been funny to me because I everybody. Thankfully, I, I was I was about to make a video on it and then didn't because there's so many other things going on. Everyone jumped on the microtransaction issue that turned out that the vast majority of the microtransactions were absolutely not a problem whatsoever. They were the equivalent of like pre-order bonuses and, and stuff like that. So I don't know. I, I, has anyone on the panel played Dragon's Dogma or have any interest in it? I'm a broke boy, so I, I have no choice but not play it. Is that why you only post about retro games? You can't afford modern ones? Maybe. <laughs> um, I, I, have, I have no interest in the game personally but I do think that like adding microtransactions at all to a single player game unless it's cosmetic just shouldn't really be a thing Yeah, yeah I haven't played I don't haven't played any of the games myself but I have noticed that it's, it's a pattern that Capcom has always done for like a long time with like you know Street Fighter Resident mm -hmm. Evil games and so I'm not necessarily surprised about the news about microtransactions or whatever pre-order bonuses yeah, the, the microtransactions are for now. There's one that people are complaining about that I understand, which is uh, being able to fast travel. You can't fast travel that microtransaction. That's pretty fucked up. But most of it's for things like. So uh, I'm getting confused on this because I keep hearing some people say, no, you can still fast travel in the game mm -hmm. without it. And then, like, some people are saying you can't fast travel at all without this microtransaction. I, I don't know, but regardless, it impacts the game mechanics if you have this as a currency you can purchase. And that's kind of my stance on it, is that same with Devil May Cry 5. Yeah, you could gather that currency within the game, but also, are you changing your difficulty to encourage me to purchase this currency? I don't know. And like that's did with the you, you you Rob Devil May Cry earlier, so I, I was going to actually use that as a point of comparison. Most of the microtransactions in this, from what I could tell based on like screenshots and whatnot that I've seen on X, are for things like extra uh, vitality and basically things to, to make the game is it does it make the game easier or was or like you said do they change the game to make it more difficult unless you buy this microtransaction stuff like what was the development process like but yeah how when, does it play how does it like impact what the final product was did they have it in mind that they wanted Odyssey. people to purchase this kind of reminds me what they did with ac odyssey where they had like those xp potions you could buy and there were certain parts of the game that were like had like big big difficulty spikes or whatever I never played that, so I, I wouldn't know. But you said Abe's Odyssey? Uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Oh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Okay, I was about to say. Yeah, I've, I've only ever played the very first Assassin's Creed game, so. I'm an AC4 fanboy. That's the only one that I care about. Black Flag. Yeah, all, all, all in all, I just... Yeah, I, I love what's going on. I really do. I, I love that we live in this fucking timeline. The the idea that everyone's throwing a fit about Dragon's Dogma making you gay, and then Melanie Max talking to Kotaku, and then Gamergate 2.0 is like, 
I would not want to live in any other time frame just because while it is stupid, while it is annoying, while we get to make comment roasting it and throwing a fit about it, it's still so like it goes to show how beautiful we really have it because this is all first world problem shit. And I like that I live in an area where I could talk about first world problems and have the AC on above me. So <laughs> Assassin's Creed Rogue yep. was apparently underrated. Do you agree with that? Anyone who plays no. Assassin's Creed? <laughs> I haven't played it. I just disagree. Um, I've got uh, I've got several games riding... priced over two hundred. A lot of retro games cost you the price of a game system. Yeah, no, I owe. Uh, no, wait, wait. So, the, so the games that cost over two hundred are you like the Neo Geo games, or? Uh, Pro- yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've got a copy of Sweet Code Two. That game alone is like a two, like over two hundred bucks, just because there was only like six hundred copies ever released in America. Well, it was, like, it was on they, don't cost, the, they don't cost a thing if you know where to look. Well, I mean, I like owning physical copies. To be fair, I like owning like collector's items and physical copies and shit like that. I I do too. I used to be a big retro game collector, but like when the prices everything got like so expensive, and also like like on like the collectors got a little like toxic or whatever. I just got so sick of it. I I do emulation. I'm an emulation guy now. So I, I emulate for the convenience, but I like owning the the you know the physical pieces in case because at the end of the day, emulation is more of a um if if what was the if i'm in the mood to play something and i don't want to hook up all those controls or all those cables things are going to need converters because all tvs are hdmi now and things like that like it, i won't lie it is a hassle i've got my gamecube i've got my wii both of them are have all the cables attached uh but i don't have them hooked up because it would it, it's just an annoying process to go through when i can emulate those games in 15 minutes play it for a few hours and probably not end up going back to it you know, for a few weeks i'm doing other stuff so i emulate but but i like having the, the equipment i i do want yeah, the setup for, to, the setup to get retro games looking nice and atvs like you have to get like a like a four thousand dollar retro tank or just all these like upscalers and all that stuff where it's like I mean, there, 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 there's, there's, there's also like the clone consoles too, because I know that there's like you know these consoles that can play like the NES and Super NES in one mm-hmm. system, and you can use that that way to play those old games. The Retron yeah. is a great system, if that's what you mean. It is. Yeah. I do. Yeah, like I, yeah. And then, and then there's also like stuff like EverDrive, so you can actually play on the actual system. There's, there's lots of options. Like I, I have, like I, I have a, a modded uh, game gear that looks pretty beautiful. I have an RGB modded Genesis. Um, like I have these options. It just I don't know. It's just a lot easier. Just load it up on like my Mio Mini or my PC and just go to town. So yeah, J- John Winslow says there's a SNES, GameCube, Wii, and 64 games, and get up over 200. I don't yeah. know if I've bought. It, I don't know if I've paid that much for a single game. Like like my my sweet code. And, I, I got a sweet code and game for fucking free, uh, which is wild. Yeah. Like, it was given to yeah, me. Yeah, game a prices gift. are outrageous. Game prices but, are but outrageous. I, like, I did pay is... seventy dollars for a GameCube copy of Twilight Princess. So. Yeah, you got to you got to steal. I think that game is like one hundred and fifty dollars now on uh or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's I I think the real steal. I think, in my opinion, that the best best I've ever paid for a game. Uh, I bought a copy of Fatal Frame Two Crimson Butterfly for eighty bucks. That was still factory sealed. Okay, my my best deal is uh, I love the story. Is I was at my local Salvation Army and I saw a copy of Animal Crossing in the box for GameCube, and I went to check the disc. And the Animal Crossing disc fell out, and in the case was Super Smash Bros. Melee. So well, I bought an expensive one. Oh, oh no! You haven't heard the best part yet. So I bought, I bought um, Animal Crossing in the box for four dollars with with Super Melee inside. Went straight to my local game store, sold Animal Crossing for four dollars, and kept the Melee disc. So yeah, I bought no. Melee for negative negative through negative one dollar. Neg- I basically made a profit of a dollar. That that's because I'm gonna Google it real quick. How much a copy of Melee goes for? Mm. Oh, it's ridiculous. Even though it's like the best selling, uh, like literally the best selling GameCube game, that goes for ridiculous prices because Melee fans are um, uh, a passionate bunch. Yeah, here's we one for 55. Here's one for almost 80. The di- the disc. Here's one that's the disc alone, just going for 45 ish. Um, here's one the whole complete setup, uh, 130. Yeah, this yeah. Here, here's one that's just the disc for fifty. Yeah, fucking yes, yeah, so me- melee. I, I I've had my same melee copy for ever since I bought the game for like fifty bucks or whatever when it came out. So yeah, same here. Yeah, I hold on to that for dear life. I hug it every day. 
It would say, yeah, I, uh, I'm, I've got the entire Zelda, uh, every Zelda game that's released on GameCube. I own, I own. Melee, physical. you look like a person who knows how to wave dash. Yes, I, oh, I absolutely. Oh, you're talking about <laughs> oh, melee. I, I, saying, I know how to wave dash. I, I, I Smash am a melee uh, supremacist. I, I don't think any who's, who's your Smash Brothers are good. Uh, <laughs> Captain Falcon's my main. Oh, okay. That's yes. Cool. Good. Yeah. Oh, if sometimes, you were, but Captain if you would have said Fox Melee, I would have left the stream. <laughs> I mean, I like <laughs> Fox, but that's because I'm a Star Fox fan, not necessarily for the game. I mean, that's like, fair. It's just, melee. Fox is, well, I mean, Fox is one of the top tier characters, though, in, in Melee. No, he's that great. makes sense as well. He's, like, I, uh, he's very I'm shiny. A, in, in Melee, I'm a Marth main. Like, that that's that just goes without saying. Oh, Mar melee is the reason I started playing Fire Emblem, which is another Same. favorite series of mine, because I love Roy, so... Okay, good. I mean, Fire Emblem is Fire peak, Emblem and more people need to play America. it. Oh, yeah. Fire Emblem, like, 7 and 8 especially are, like, some of the best games I've ever played in my life. And I'm going okay. through 6 right now. i got to translate a card, so. Okay, hey, you're gonna you got to play the Kelly The Why? only yeah. Fire Emblem I've played is Three Houses. Uh, this Get is, out. hold on, hold on, Nerdy one. Neo. Hold on, guys. I Get know, out. This, this is a, hold on, guys. <laughs> okay, this I'm, is I think Ace was. Hey, shut the fuck up. I'm going to kick you because I got to address this. Uh, this is objectively uh, fucking false right here. Roy is not better than Marth. Like, like no, if you Nerdy like Neo's Roy right. More, I'm no, just going to say like, this. If you, if you like Roy more, that's fine. But in terms of their frames, in terms of the difference of the power, in terms yeah. of, of the way you look at the tier list and how they perform in the competitive circuit, Roy is actually one of the worst characters in the fucking game. And I we need oh. to stop we need to stop this mentality that just because Roy has a special one hit kill that he's better than Marth. Marth is objectively a better character design wise in melee. I like Roy okay. more okay, you got story me. You got wise. Me. I like I like Roy more story wise, but we got we gotta stop this fake narrative right here. Okay, Marth continue. does no Marth does move better. I agree with you. I'm a huge Roy fan, and I just want to give the history that nerdy Neo and I are nemesis. We disagree on everything, so I'm just grateful <laughs> that we agree on something. <laughs> no, I, I love good. nerdy Neo. He's fucking no, no, fantastic. he's great. I, I love nerdy Neo. It's just we always have this thing where we have the opposite opinions. So it's like an internet joke that we're nemesis. And also siblings, I guess. <laughs> is Radiant Dawn over two hundred dollars? Shit, shit. Well, I can believe I that. My yeah. copy of Radiant Dawn. I can definitely believe that. I, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I've, uh, yeah, no, yeah, I've got my copy of Radiant Dawn. I do not have a copy of Path of Radiance. I would love to own a copy, but I, I yeah. Yes, the, anything to, to to talk when it comes to Smash Bros. competitive scene, that's a fucking trigger for me. Like, depending on which <laughs> game it is, I I will get triggered over people not knowing their competitive Smash knowledge. Like, as somebody that plays it currently the most, the objectively worst character in the game, because my main right now and the, the guy I play in tournament is Ganondorf, and Ganondorf oh. is, is the lowest tier character in yeah, fucking Smash Bros. One. Ultimate. Uh, I and I'm a Ganondorf main. I acknowledge that that's. I take shit like that super seriously. Frame data and all. I was like, no, I, I want people to know what they're talking about when because because I can't stand people who say they're good at Smash Bros when they just casually play. Like, no, no, you're not. You're not good. You're well, you're hanging out with your siblings. Good. That is not the same as actually being. It's good a party at game Bros. to you. <laughs> I, I'm just gonna come around and say it. When it comes to Smash, I am a filthy casual, so I am staying in my lane. I am saying square in my lane right now. Yeah, Hypno is gathering ammunition. Yeah, there, he's he's got a lot of that. There, there's a few things. People who are afraid of clowns trigger me. I can't fucking stand pussies who are afraid of clowns. Wait, so you're not afraid of clowns? You're afraid of people who don't or who are afraid of clowns? I'm, I'm not afraid hey, of people who are afraid of clowns. Okay. I, 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 can't stand them. No, I, I, I just can't stand people who are afraid of clowns. Leon, you're just mad because they're all afraid of you. <laughs> <laughs> just, the, no, just the idea of like, oh, I saw fucking uh, the, the it when I was a kid, and now clowns terrify me. Is like it's such a piece of shit mentality. Clowns exist to bring joy to people. Their whole job is to try and make children and adults alike laugh and make the world a better place. And because you saw some shitty Stephen King made-for-TV miniseries, <laughs> you're afraid of his entire honorable profession. No, I love. I clowns. mean, there was that one like killer, killer clown, clowns. but yeah. killer clowns. I mean, I find space. creepy clowns entertaining, but I'm not scared of them. Yeah, wasn't I, John I, Wayne Gacy a killer clown? Yeah, yes, literally. No, John Wayne Gacy never actually killed people dressed as a clown. He was he was a clown who also was a fucking. Oh, murderer. melee! What have you done? What have you done, melee? <laughs> what? what? Is, <laughs> oh <laughs> my god! Hey, I'm this, just this, saying. This stream just went in a weird direction. I'm the you know, same I'm as Lucy Splits. <laughs> what the fuck? Wow, <laughs> oh, no. You're on the sixth box. We're, we're wild over on uh, no. the channel, to say that much. 
Uh, oh killer God. clowns. It started a lot of the clown fear. I, I can't imagine anybody being afraid of. When you say killer clowns, do you mean like? Because there's never actually been a legit killer no, clown. No, he's talking about ki killer clowns, killer clowns from, from outer space. Outer space. Yeah. Which, by the way, amazing. shout Who, out to that game seriously? coming out. I'm so yeah, I know. I can't wait game. for the Killer Clowns game. I think it's gonna be great. No, I, I adore that movie, but I can't imagine. Oh my god, the hungering begins. <laughs> yeah, I respect it. Gotta make that clussy yeah, honk. Uh, I have oh my god! As well, clown pretending to try and hurt me. So yeah, I dislike clowns. But hold on, hold on. This is the same thing as being like, oh, I had a black dude try and mug me. Now I don't like black people. Like what? You're gonna judge an entire group of people based on the actions of one person who's not even a real clown, by the way. You have one of those people you say dressing up as a clown pretending to try and hurt me. So a wasn't really trying to hurt you. Wasn't a real clown, and now you judge all fucking clowns. That's fucked up. I, mean, I feel like That's you're racist. It's racist. A bit hard, but... <laughs> Did we just have a clowns lives matter moment here? What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you yeah. just oh, my, my comments are safe space. They both have big have noses, so like. <laughs> wait, wait, Mark, did you just say that? Hey, whoa, 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 hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hey, 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 no, yeah. 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 Semi. Uh, <laughs> you know, it took me a moment to, to pause that last sentence. You might even read that for a second. Clowns are a race confirmed. Uh, I'm going to be wary. Yes, there's nothing wrong with being cautious, Leon. <laughs> I mean, oh. th yeah, there, there, yes, there's nothing wrong with being cautious. I agree. But like, the idea, it's just, again, it, it makes, it it doesn't make sense to me to, to be afraid of what is genuinely considered, like, where do you draw the lines? Like, oh, I'm afraid of clowns, but mimes are okay. I'm a, a court jester. I'm on the fence about them. Like, what is it about clowns just because people have you know, one bad experience on Halloween or something? Like if a dude was dressed as fucking, you know, like, like a ninja and tried to hurt you as a ninja, would you be afraid of ninjas? It, it doesn't make sense. Hey, my ninjas are ones. cool. Ninjas are cool though. So are clowns. They're funny, but they're not cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would, I would disagree. I think clowns are incredibly cool. Well, hey, I'm you, just saying okay a lot of people wrong. do panel recognition. Uh, there was also a film called Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Is anyone afraid of tomatoes? Thank you, I, I like tomatoes, too. so... I'm actually yeah, allergic yeah. to tomatoes, but I'm not afraid of them. Huh. We need clown equality. <laughs> um, it wasn't nearly... I, I wasn't nearly attacked by a mime or a ninja, though. But wait, wait, like, was he actually attacked by a clown? Apparently uh, yeah, so. Yeah, she, 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 she set up here. Let me, I wasn't uh, sure if this was, like, channel lore or if this actually no, happened. No, remember, like, the late 2010s? Like I, I had one of those people dressing where, like, up as well as a clown pretending oh, to try and hurt me. So, yeah, I just like clowns. people? The juggalos? Whatever, I don't juggalos know. Juggalos are fine. Wasn't, like, the whole juggalos thing, like, where random people in London were getting attacked by people dressed as clowns? Is that actually what happened here? No, they have in the U.S., too. So oh act God. I actually watched a I'm video uncultured. on this literally last night. So so nothing it it happened about six times. No one was ever injured, mind you, or at least no one was ever killed. I don't know if no one was ever injured, but basically it happened about six times over the course of a summer. And the, the the media ran with it as if it was some sort of massive epidemic, when in all reality, it was a few small isolated incidents that people just saw the same video of over and over on the internet to the point where the, the, the mainstream media started running the story as if like people all over the world are being attacked by these random people. No, it was a super small thing. The internet blew up into, into making it look like it was something bigger than it was. Like there's there's actually deep lore on the the clown the like the 2016 or 2019 uh whichever it was uh clown epidemic this is insane i remember hearing some news about it but i was like okay yeah somebody was dressed up as a clown that's weird yeah that, that, that's no, all see, it was I'm a, little, go I'm, for it, say, I'm a little bit of a conspiracy theorist on this well i feel like that's just the government covering it up it's like how in that one florida case that one florida penis man said that there are other penis men out there <laughs> I feel like the government is covering up these groups. Wait, you mean the you mean just men? Yeah, <laughs> we're not yes. men who we're not people I... who have penises. We are just men, <laughs> manly men. We're men. I don't know. He specifically oh, yeah. said penis men, so I don't know what he means by that. <laughs> the phobia, <laughs> the phobia thing is a good point, though. Yeah, maybe they just developed a. I'm sorry if that happened to you. I didn't realize that actually happened. That that's terrible. But yeah, I guess. Yeah, I mean that's phobia. terrible, but also freaking hilarious. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hey, what are you gonna tell the cops? I, I understand. Who got shot? This is really honked up. This is really yeah, honked up, guys. Yeah, he says it happened in the U.S. until a clown got shot. Yeah, people are getting Wait, afraid of Texas? people in costumes, and a clown gets fucking shot. 
Like it what? is to me the, the idea is I phobias to make sense when it's something that is out of your control in terms of like clowns are just people. Clowns are individuals. I don't agree with attacking an entire group of people that want to bring joy to, to individuals just because of a few bad apples. Like that aren't even real clowns, mind you. It, 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 We're I, gonna see I'm, like Leon at carnivals and circuses and stuff soon with a sign saying clown lives matter and he's just gonna be the one person standing not Wait, wait, wait. Honk, 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 honk if you like clowns. Honk if you support clowns. <laughs> Uh, God. Oh make clowns great again like <laughs> i don't know <laughs> why it's so, like because i can understand people being like afraid of spiders or something like spiders they don't have individual uh, individualism they're not like sent i mean yes they're sentient beings but they're not like humans or whatever in terms of people being afraid of of thunderstorms like oh the loud noise like i get what an irrational fear is but for something that requires on on the the human element so much it's just it really is strange to me Gloves up, don't squirt. <laughs> All right, that might be my favorite. <laughs> Jana's here. Jana's a voice of reason. Jana, are you afraid of clowns or are you cool? Appreciate you for showing up, girl. <laughs> you're either afraid of them or you're cool. <laughs> exactly. Is there anyone other? What, what, why? What do you guys? I'm sure there are things that I, you, I love killer clowns from outer space. It's my favorite horror film at this point. Uh, shout out to James for showing me that because I. Those like I don't really care about horror, and then you show me that I'm like I love killer clowns; they're great. So I'm with you, man. Protect the clowns. But but is there any fear that people have that just makes no sense to you? Like like is there, is there so many people like oh I'm afraid of X Y Z, and you're like why? Like no, I wouldn't say that because I think I have pretty irrational fears. Like I'm not a big fan of swimming, for example. Oh, I'm afraid of water. I, actually, I have fear we're, we're of drowning, which I think is because of Sonic Two. I don't know if you have this as well, but the the freaking timer in Sonic Two. Yeah, dude, that music is haunting. Oh my god! Yeah, pretty sure Shout I did like, fear. That was it's actually game. it's it's even worse in Sonic Adventure because I don't know if you've ever played that game or not. But if oh, you yeah, drown yeah. in Sonic Adventure, he just sort of like floats in the water like an actual dead body instead of falls out the screen like a normal death. The death animation yeah. for drowning in Sonic Adventure is fucked up. It is. I, it's Sonic is at fault for me being afraid of. That's a phobia. I yes, got. It's, yes, it's all Sonic's fault. Let's all blame the. It is. Blame so, yeah, I'm blaming Sonic. Exactly. <laughs> no, see, I have a fear of heights because I want to tall. Fear but... of heights, I can understand. Like that one makes sense. But I, I'm curious because, like, I'm actually annoyed by people who are afraid of clowns. Is there? I, I'm, I'm curious if you guys get annoyed at people over certain fears. Uh, maybe. No, a lot of it don't it doesn't me impact it. me. I don't know. No? Like... <laughs> yeah, I just have a patient of a saint, so. Uh, hail to you as well, Mephisto. Appreciate you for showing up, buddy. Um, all right, I guess I'm an asshole then. That's what it boils down no! to. I'm a fucking dick. It's valid. We all have things that irk us. I'm not even judging you for that. I'm just like, I can't even think of anything where I'm like, why are you afraid of that? I'm just like, okay, yeah, probably. My fear is pretty irrational, so. Uh, there's some weird fucking uh, fears out there, though. Like, like the, the people who are afraid of balloons. That's one that I also uh, doesn't make sense to me. Like, like that one doesn't bother me. I just I can't wrap my head around. It. I can't rationalize it. Wait, wait, hey, yo, my father was walking afraid of balloons. Wait, what? What was that, Prince? Yeah, like how could people what? be afraid oh. of balloons? <laughs> oh, okay. So wait, who said their father? Can't stop. Nick was. Uh, I said my father would walk by balloons. <laughs> oh, your father was <laughs> robbed by balloons. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are you yeah, defending you know the balloons Rocky... because you like clowns, though? Come on. Balloon no, lies it's, it's, matter. Like, balloons is just a, like, what's it called? I'm trying to remember. I, I'm going to Google it real quick because it's, it's an actual fucking phobia. Um, I mean, there's a phobia name. Part for are everything. they afraid of floating away, the popping? Like, what is it? The fact that it expands? Here, I'm, I'm pulling up the, the Google on it right now. So, uh, a fear of balloons is called globophobia, which is an extreme, irrational, overwhelming fear of balloons. It can include anxiety, panic, or extreme fear at the sight, smell, sound, touch, or thought of balloons. Some people <laughs> with globophobia only fear the sound of a balloon popping, while also is other fear that oh, the texture. That I can understand. I don't like the texture of, of balloons, oh, personally. That reminds but... me. Have you guys read the Pokédex entry for Drifloom, the Pokémon? Oh, yeah. It's dark as shit. It literally just kidnaps people, kidnaps kids by, like, Oh, pretty, pretty balloon! And they're like, oh, I'm going now. Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> I I've got some weird like his Mephisto says I cannot think of any weird phobias that I suffer with. Now I, I've got white coat syndrome. I'm terrified of doctors and hospitals and shit. And then I, I have a fear of of water. Uh, so I understand completely. It's just I don't know why clowns weird me out so much. I really uh, like. Were you the, the one that, who wrote that really bad IGN review of Pokemon? Um, 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 um
Oh, I'm sure I wouldn't. Now it wouldn't have been me because I fucking love Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Seven point three. Ruby is too my much favorite water. Game. What? Seven point five out of ten. Too much water. Oh. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, my fat cousin was afraid to jump on something pr- uh, pretty short, and it was annoying trying to work out with her. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> What's oh, bad God, is no. in Pokemon, there's a, yeah, Bal- yeah that, we're talking about, yeah, Drifloon. Yep, that's the one. Uh, I get annoyed when people are afraid of using logic. Yeah, Janet just oh. exists in a constant state of fucking well, that's annoyment. Just common sense, yeah. I hate stupid people. That's, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> what if you're afraid of clowns and balloons? How can you feel about, how do you feel about birthday cake? <laughs> Oh. Clown shoes. Well, imagine being afraid I mean, of if they have birthday cake, I, I don't mind. Yeah, it, it's the, the fear of the fear of water isn't even a fear. Of, I don't know if fear is the right word. Like, like I'm not afraid of water so much so as uh, because it's not like a fear of drowning. I don't like this. The sensation of being wet makes me feel like oh. physically off. Like I can't. No move wonder you never operate. had a girlfriend. No wonder you've never had a girlfriend. Like, like if, if it's raining outside, I can't stand going outside because the water hits you unevenly. So, like, parts of my body will be wet and parts will be dry. And I feel like I feel asymmetrical. Interesting. Yeah, no, mine is purely the drowning thing. That's why I blame Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> I love the water. I fucking love the water. See, I I, I, I had people over at my house who were afraid of birds. And I'm like, well, thanks, uh, thanks Hitchcock. Sucks, sucks to suck. I'm not putting up my bird for your convenience. This is his house, too. Because yeah, I, I have I a swear, Alfred bird, Hitchcock has done more to contribute to that than anything else. What does? The birds by Alfred Hitchcock. Oh, oh, yes. I, but in in th- th- uh, in that movie, they're like murderous birds. Like, like, like they're they fuck people up. Like my bird's just like a little parrot. Like I people will say like, mine oh, is probably spiders. Can you put I have your a bird up so that I can hang out with you? And I'm like, no, this is his house too. Like, would you like me to say, would you put, would you put your dog up so I can hang out with you? Wouldn't that be pretty douchey? <laughs> mine are like spiders, and like I'm not really a big fan of snakes. Fucking nerdy yes, his birds aren't real. Um, I go into fight or flight around sudden spiders. Spiders don't bother me, the moths do. The only bug that bothers me is moths. Why? Bugs shouldn't have sure. fur. But what but but Mothra? I, and and it took me years upon years uh to, to accept the fact that I uh, I appreciate Mothra as the queen of the monsters. Bugs Mothra died have for fur. your sins, so even fucking respect. <laughs> So, yep, I agree, future boy. Wet, wet clothes are the worst, or even just being wet. In, like, like if I'm if I'm gonna take a shower or something, I have to. I can't like I, I get people who will be like, oh, I'll put my hair up in a thing and and not that way my hair doesn't get wet. And uh, no, I've I, I need to be completely drenched, completely soaked, so that way my body can feel even. And even then, it feels super heavy because the water weighs you down. But like, I can't stand having like a wet body or dry hair. And so, and I'm, I take my hair very seriously. I've got like six different conditioners. So, the bird like gimmick effect. Seven. I'm afraid of being sober. Is this true, Melee? <laughs> I, don't, I don't speak for him. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm afraid of cicadas, and we're having a super cicada year this summer. Oh, great. Sounds like a cruel <laughs> summer. Uh, I, I can't picture a cicada. I can imagine the sound they make, but I don't know. The, I can't picture what they look like. I mean, I anyone know. who's watched animes knows the sound of cicadas. That is true. <laughs> yes. Yes, that is true as well, John. Wet hair feels weird on your skin when it's the only part of you wet. Yeah, that's valid. Yeah, I've, I've had friends make fun of me because like, after my hair is, uh, dries and whatnot, I, I will do the whole thing that women do with a towel, wrap it around. But I've, got, I've got super long hair, though, so like it makes sense. You got to take care of it. It's great. No, it's nice hair. Uh, spiders in video games, no problem. A spider right next to me when I don't expect it. After- Dude, that was something that annoyed the shit out of me was when that, that Star Wars game came out recently and they had an arachnophobia mode. Oh my god, I know. Wait, what? Yeah, they oh, would literally like was... disappear the spiders pretty much because people couldn't yep. handle it. Uh, I'm afraid that sharks will grow legs one day. That's not <laughs> necessarily a bad... Like, I don't know. So I you want like guard chop. Sh- you want guard chop. You want guard chop. dinosaurs, though. If, if, if sharks have been around for that long, I feel like they'd have done it already. So basically, he's afraid of guard chomp. Yeah, I think you've created a new fear for me. Oh my god! <laughs> Sharks with legs. Yeah. Uh, Abomination AJ, you're an artist. I want you to. I need you to draw me a, a shark with legs. But, but I, want, I want to be really sexy female legs, like that fishing pole from Toy Story. I want oh to be like god. a great what white the with the thighs of that bitch from Toy Story. Um, I saw <laughs> the murder. Thighs do not save lives. 
I saw the murder bird movie as a kid and thought it was happening uh, when I moved to Texas with the uh, grackles migrating. The fuck's a grackle? I've learned so much today. I don't know what that is. Yeah, I'm, I'm, hold on. I'm going to have to Google what a grackle is. It sounds like a, like a off brand potato chip. I thought it was like oh, I don't know, a rice krispies. Ah. Yeah, type of bird. Hold on. This, this, is, this is a grackle. Um, Very pretty coloring. I like it. Mm. I will say it's got a bit of an evil eye. I'll give it that. It does have a bit of an evil eye. My bird mm. doesn't have an evil eye, though. Uh, Yeah, that's what I meant. If you look down and see a tarantula on my arm out of nowhere, there'll be a fight involved, I promise. Oh, but tarantulas are sweethearts, bro. You can keep them as pets. Tarantulas are amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, they made the frogs that. gay. What's that to say? They won't get the frogs legs. <laughs> you know what? This man is seriously creating nope. new fear for me. Nope, nope. That was that's all you need. I to don't say like what they're putting the water. I'm hearing the freaking this, frogs gay. Frogs this is gay. Becoming more real every day. I'm afraid. That, now. That's an actual thing, though. People like to make fun of Alex Jones, but that's an actual fucking thing. Well, it's proven. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, percent proven. Yeah. And they I mean, come up like with Jones this like article, and they're like all scientific about it. And then you're like, wait, doesn't that mean the frogs are turning gay? <laughs> like, like, yeah, you painted like this like beautiful image, weight. and then it's like it's the same thing. There's actually so many times where Alex Jones is proven right. It's crazy. Yeah, it was like, uh, it's one of those things that just so. Dana called people. a crackle a Dollar Tree crow. <laughs> uh, there are many moments in Texas you will see so many birds in the parking lot. It looks like back when it was actually a uh, uh, when it's a uh, light gray. Oh my god! I live in an area that has spiders that will end you. Actually, we have to be careful. I mean, uh, that's totally fair. Just not a tarantula. I, there, there's no such. I, there, there's not a, a tarantula species on Earth that can harm a human. This is but why yeah, they're, they're Australia. Like Australia has so many spiders. I'm like, no. Even if it's a rumor, I don't care. I'm not risking it. I mean, to be fair, everything Australia wants to kill you. So, <laughs> including their own government. Well, oh, I'm in Canada, god. so same deal here. Fair enough. I mean, I mean, your country has legalized suicide, so. Yeah, I know. You That's why I always make the joke. Oh. I'm Canadian healthcare myself when things annoy me. Dude, and, and that is, valuable. I love that because, like, have you ever watched? Because people talk about the Simpsons, uh, you know, talking about uh, uh, predicting so many things. They always leave off Futurama. Futurama predicted a lot of shit. Suicide. You guys basically have suicide booths in Canada. Yep, yeah, pretty much. Like, have you seen the commercial they did where it's all beautiful, like? Oh, it's so great to kill yourself. Like, oh my god. That that, that scares me. That frightens me. That, that I don't watch me. mainstream media, so but I am curious. Maybe I'll look that up later because that, that sounds about right. Uh, How can you make suicide illegal? How can you punish someone who tried and failed? <laughs> uh, yeah, the fact that suicide's illegal has always bothered me because like it, it never made... How the fuck are they going to What are they going to do, arrest the corpse? Yeah, but the yeah. whole point is to discourage people from doing it in fear of, like, if they fail to do it, that there'll be repercussions, right? So it, There should be yeah. repercussions if you fail to do it. That means you're a failure. I like winners. I mean, if you I, fail to I'm do it... I'm just saying it's, it's quite literally a tactic to prevent people from trying it in the first place. It doesn't have to have logic to it necessarily. Yeah. I think it's that they can help they like people who trust in health care is now just have you consider death. Yeah, yeah, no, genuinely, I haven't experienced it myself yet, but like I, I've heard some articles about it. It's insane. Like, oh, you're having this problem? Cool. Have you tried this? <laughs> uh, Which we can't even see the news like, here, yeah. by the way. Like, you, there's a bunch of like on Facebook, you can't even see the news in Canada. So, yeah, uh, Janet Bananas says um, that Goro spider or Joro spiders are beautiful. I don't know about Joro spiders, but uh, dude, I think goldenrod spiders are beautiful. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever seen a goldenrod spider or not, but like, this um, is a this is a flamboyant as fuck spider. Like, look at this. This shit is like, oh my god, kill it with fire, kill it with fire, kill with fire. You don't think that's cool looking? Kill it with this, fire. This is like all the, the fire. All the fire. Of spiders. Bro, this is looking like a Timothy spider, Gwen. Right, yeah, that, that is, that's gotta Gwen. be the spider, the bitch spider Gwen. Yeah, that's sorry. Funny. Oh my god. Uh, news is illegal, but suicide is legal. Another that's day in Le Leafland. We enjoyed here in Leafland, day of the rake. Do you guys oh. have any plans to attempt to move to America, which is not much better, but notably better than Canada? It's been considered for sure. I mean, we're both will say this, big though. fans of America, so like we love it, America, so. I, I will yeah. say this though. I was I was uh, I was dating a girl who lived in Canada, so I was visiting there for a while. Your poutine is actually pretty good. I'll give you that. 
Oh my god, we have great poutine. Montreal has like some of the best I've ever had. Yeah, oh, well, I, I'm in Michigan, so I was like dating a girl in Windsor. I was, I was about to say the yeah. only time I've had poutine was in Michigan, and uh, I, I liked it. It was it was fine. Yeah. yeah, I see what you mean, Jana. These things are gorgeous. Holy shit, look at the colors. Oh my god, but kill also it, kill terrifying. it. terrifying. <laughs> Worth my flame for. I need to ask you. Like, it looks like it's for. cosplaying as a different kind of bug. Like, hey, I'm about to go to the insect convention. Here's me as a bumblebee. Like, well, it's gonna be butterflies too, are beautiful so. too, and they're not gonna bite me and murder me. So I'll look at butterflies. I, I, I don't know what poutine is. Also, it, I have no, I, I just know it tastes good when I had it. Fries, gravy, and cheese curds is essentially what a poutine is. Okay. Yeah. And then you can add stuff, right? Like people have, like, there's like a Mexican version where you add like guacamole and stuff to it. But like the basic yeah. one is just gravy, melted cheese, specifically cheese curds, and uh, fries. Yeah, it's pretty good. I, I, I had like actual food, like poutine, Canadian poutine in Canada. It's pretty good. Dude, because you said you were in Michigan, so my, my favorite food of all time is a uh, Philly cheesesteak, and I'm making it my goal to uh, get a Philly cheesesteak in every continental state in the U.S. I've had a Philly cheesesteak in like 14 or 18 states or something at this point. I'm gonna you know finish off in in uh, Philly and have like a real one. It'll be my oh. last. And uh, I will say Michigan has the second worst Philly I've ever fucking had. Well, our, our pizza Michigan seems pretty stuff. good. Like Detroit pizza is pretty good. Yeah, well, I, I hope that's the case because their Philly cheesesteak was fucking garbage. And they didn't even have – I will just give the restaurant credit. They didn't even have the balls to call it a Philly cheesesteak on the menu. They just called it a cheesesteak, so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we're Michigan, so what do you expect? <laughs> uh, is it true, uh, Trudeau Castro's son? The resemblance is uncanny is all I got to say. And the his, timeline his mom does not makes... have the best track record. I mean, she's very flirty. I mean, isn't there like a passage in Trump's novel where he details like Trudeau, like Trudeau's wife, like blowing someone? Uh, this is news to me. I had no idea, but I'm, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Because the, the thing curious. about the Trudeau Catholic stuff Trump's is novel. I'm curious why Trump is writing about Trudeau's mom giving it was like an autobiography. You know, I'm like, what? <laughs> it was yeah, an that's a little bit out of pocket, like, even for me. It was an autobiography uh, kind of thing. It was like, like an it sounds like an autoerotic biography. <laughs> exactly. Oh my God. No, 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 no. <laughs> Oh, see, don't I? I don't, I don't want. I've got enough friends in Philly that they know where to take me. That, that's that's what it boils down to. I got enough friends but in Philly they, they know where to take me. So, but apparently, uh, the Trudeaus actually visited with Castro, and it it does kind of line up with with uh with uh with with his birth. <laughs> yeah, I, I've seen the conspiracy theories, and I won't lie. I'm hard pressed to believe. I I wouldn't be surprised if this was true. It, it would be the least Trudeau... surprising conspiracy theory to me. What, what is everybody's favorite need, conspiracy like, theory? Epilogue. I gotta know. Does everybody here have a favorite conspiracy theory? Hmm. There's too hmm. many. Which one won't will get me canceled the least? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a conspiracy theory. You shouldn't be canceled over any of them. It's all theories. I'll tell that to them. But um. Hmm. Yeah, I have no idea. Hey, buddy, I guess you know, mine no, 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 Kurt Cobain didn't kill beat. himself. <laughs> Kurt Cobain was murdered. That's the one I, I cling to. Yeah, that's a good one. I think Federal Reserve stuff I can get really autistic with, like especially when I go into like the Titanic and I've, I'm not even going to get on that rant, but like oh I, I've God. spent like days like just awake being like, wait, this happened this year. And that, yeah. So Federal Reserve. I have an autistic amount of knowledge about Kurt Cobain's murder. Like I've, I've watched, I've read, yeah, all, I do, I've read I a lot of like, that. I fully believe Kurt Cobain was murdered. He did not commit suicide. The, the gun was too big for him first and foremost. Um, not, not only that, like, like sh okay, you, you can make the argument. Well, maybe he used heroin or kit was neatly He was on away. so much fucking heroin, he would not have been able to hold a gun. He wouldn't have been able to hold a cat. See, the, the, see, the common rejoinder is that it's like, oh, but he was a big heroin addict, you know. I don't give a fuck. He had enough heroin in his system to kill a fucking elephant. You do not just adapt to heroin like also, that. Also, his, when, his, when he was found, his hair was neatly combed, and his, his heroin kit was neatly put away. Um, also, the also the fact that like he wasn't found for three days, and all of a sudden that day they called an electrician to work on that specific area. That's also, weird. if you read the also if you read the so called suicide note, it, it it reads more like a retirement letter, and the part that's like for for Courtney or Francis is actually confirmed to be in a different handwriting. I would say that my favorite conspiracy theory by far is the idea that the whole entire coronavirus was started in a lab or by a bat. 
Yeah, um, I really liked buy a does bag. Anyone want, who wants to tell him? Who wants to tell him? Is it, did you want to tell him or should I? Uh, should you go ahead. You can tell me. Uh, it's not a conspiracy theory. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Did y'all hear Bieber says he was forced uh, to give rim jobs? What? I can no, believe it's like it. Like a ditty thing? I can believe it, but I've never heard that. Or I'm sure or something. I don't know. Like, I, I just can't wait for, like, in 10 years when Millie Bobby Brown talks about how Drake groomed her. Because, like, apparently he was, like, like like he was, like, friends with Drake as early as, like, 14 years old. So, like, yeah. I, I can't wait for those those stories to come out. Yeah, the, the, the Drake situation is weird because, like, at first I was on on the camp, like, because I'm a big Michael Jackson supporter and defender. Like, I, I yeah. truly believe Michael did nothing He's innocent. Wrong. He's innocent. And so I wanted to give the same sort of thing to Drake. I was all like, well, you know, Drake knows what it's like to be a child star. Maybe he was just trying to offer guidance. But then you start and come out shit like P. Diddy and fucking uh, uh, Jay-Z and then R. Kelly. I'm like, fuck, maybe Michael's the exception, not the rule. Maybe Drake really did try and groom See, this Millie is the Bobby problem Brown. I'm having like, with, like, the whole Nickelodeon documentary. Is the fact that he used Drake Bell? It's like, oh, but but he was a, but it's it's just, it's okay that he did all this really uh pervy stuff because he was abused himself. Like, shut the fuck up. So, uh, Abomination Ages says only conspiracy I can think of is Michael Jackson's death and Illuminati. I don't. So, I'm more, never ascribed to uh, uh, malice where you can attribute to stupidity is, is a very common phrase. And that and doctor was I very think stupid. That yeah, I think that Michael Jackson just had a retarded fucking doctor. Like, maybe, maybe he was paid off, and there was some some higher ups that wanted Michael Jackson dead. But I, I can't think of because he died in like twenty what two thousand nine or something. Two thousand nine. What yeah. cultural relevance did Michael Jackson have in two thousand nine that was worrisome? Like, well, you know what it's like when a, when when an artist dies, it's okay to like them again, and then all of a sudden after Michael Jackson died. It was okay to be a Michael Jackson. I was so fan, pissed like, about that because I was already a Michael Jackson fan. I was like, "Oh, you fucking fake fans who made fun of me in school for like a Michael Jackson." Like, literally, now you're a Michael Jackson. Fan. People who were telling Michael Jackson jokes literally two days prior were like, "No, no, you can't joke about that." Uh, R two Lee two is asking us moon landing, yay or nay? A little bit of both. Uh, my belief. I don't is think that, it yes, happened. I, I think the moon landing absolutely happened, but I think a lot of the footage we have is fake footage. I mean, all of it's lost anyway. So, yeah, I say it happened. It happened. No. Hero, what do you think? Moon landing, yay or nay? Uh, I don't know. I kind of just don't care. It's, it's one of those things where I'm just like, bro, really, what? Sorry. sorry. I do find oh, the no. fact that we have really powerful telescopes and we still have not actually found like the sites. Like we found like the tracks, but like we have such powerful telescopes and like, like why don't we launch, launch some probes and like go to the moon, find the sites, take some pictures and solve the problem. We, we can do it. We can land a probe on a freaking comet. We can land a probe on the moon. Kazoo says, how do they get back? Nay. Zach says, how do they get knack? But you correct himself. Uh, moon landing happened. They're lying about it not being made out of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my favorite conspiracy theory isn't like a, a super um, hot button one or anything, but, but it's, it's about World War II. Uh, so there's a conspiracy theory that we actually knew that the attack on Pearl Harbor was going to happen, uh, but because of our previous several year long stances of being uh, staying out of it, and not being involved in it, we would let Pearl Harbor happen as an excuse to join the Allies and join the. I war. mean, it's it's not like we have a history that goes all the way back to this day of letting attacks happen. Like the Lusitania attack uh, was basically our entry into World War One, and you know I'm pretty sure they you know that was allowed to happen. And also, we it's, it's it's a proven fact. We knew about 9/11 at least five years in advance. Like I'm I, like I don't think 9/11 was an inside job, but I do think they allowed 9/11 to happen because it's very, like that would make it an inside job. Yeah, that's an inside job. That's that's yeah. my definition. The US what an inside blew, job is. But I'm not saying the U.S. blew up the trade centers like that part of the conspiracy. So they hired but, oh, someone to do it. It's still an inside job. I, I'm saying what I'm saying is it's an objective fact that intelligence agencies. Knew something was happening at least two or three years in advance, and nothing was done. So, yeah, Nerdy Neo says, I do like the Titanic was an insurance scam conspiracy theory. See, the Titanic being an insurance scam, that one to me is far less interesting than the fact that that book, the the, the uh, Voyage of the Titan or whatever, came out 10 yeah. years ago. It is almost identical to how the Titanic went down. Like, that's the one that that's weird. Like, I'm just saying also, that. 
there's prominent rich people that were on that boat and the federal reserve was roughly made around the same time. That's that, that is true. That's that's also I mean that is a fact about the Titanic. I also, um, last summer went to the Titanic. I'm going to cook up a, a conspiracy cool. theory. I think Andrew Jackson the reason why they attempted to assassinate him was because he opposed the US Bank, National Bank. Well, they assassinated who? Andrew Jackson? They tried to, but they failed. They say, yeah, there was a failed attempt. And Andrew Jackson's my favorite president. And I was, uh, I know a lot. <laughs> he, he was too fucking, too hard to fucking die. I mean, like, where you see the main like, man too angry to die? That was. was old it, do, do, do you know what killed Andrew Jackson? This is the most amazing thing to me. What? A broken heart. Oh. When his wife died, he just let himself die. Like, th this is a verifiable thing that happened. When his wife died, he clung to her. Like, this is the man that destroyed the natives and was willing to tear down the attempt to tear down the Fed Bank. And then when his wife died, he had to be physically pried from her body. Oh, you want to know the craziest thing? Like, like you heard, like, how hard it was to kill Rasputin, right? He well, was yeah, shot, club, beaten, drowned. Like, that guy was, like, impossible to kill. <laughs> that's well, that's yeah, also sure. true. He did have a cursing parrot, Jim and I are. <laughs> Dude, I, so I like to, I like to uh, go for walks with my parrot and go to the gas station, things like that. And um, I live in the Midwest, which means there's a lot of meth around here. And so I walk into the gas station, and this fucking 90-pound tweaker woman covered in tattoos of fucked up teeth sees a parrot on my shoulder, runs up to me, gets uncomfortably close to my personal space, and just goes, can he say curse words? It was really fucking weird. <laughs> and, that's when the cur and that's when the parrot says, fuck off. <laughs> oh, did you ever see that video? Because uh, you know how, like, uh, crows or ravens can actually be, like, like ravens that are, like, parrots. They can repeat words. Where a raven actually lands and, like, uh, he said, like, the, the Mexican dude says, fuck you. And, the, and the, like, uh, the big-ass beak is like, fuck you. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. No, the... Uh... My my bird can talk a little bit, but he doesn't. He, he doesn't talk. He only says a few little key phrases. I would like to eventually get an African gray. African grays can. They they're the, the no, parrot that, thing that will outlast you. That thing will outlast you though. Yeah, yeah. African grays live to be about ninety years. That that's true. My 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 bird will live to be about thirty. Mm. <laughs> Frig off. Uh, did you know if they didn't kill Abraham Lincoln, he was talking about deporting all freed slaves? I fucking hate Abraham Lincoln, dude. One of the worst presidents we ever had. Fuck that dude. Yeah. I mean, I'd be okay with deporting all the free slaves at the time just because uh, it, it would be an eradication of the financial institutions that was happening in America. Um, but yeah, no, that, that wouldn't surprise me at all. Yeah. Fuck Abraham Lincoln. Like he, he, like, a lot of people don't realize that he was uh, an absolute hypocrite. He grew up owning slaves. He didn't want to fucking free the slaves. He he would throw, he put journalists in fucking uh, prison didn't for he potentially say, being Southern sympathizers. If like, I could save the Union without freeing a single slave, I would? Yeah, that, that is a direct quote. If I could free the Union without, or if I, if I could save the Union without freeing a slave, I would. Yep. The Emancipation Proclamation was, was more was more toothless than Hunter Biden. The, the Emancipation Proclamation didn't even free the slaves in the South. Because the South had seceded. It only applied to the North, which was already slavery-free. It was so retarded. Yes, dishonest Abe. Absolutely. <laughs> um, how did this history talk come about? Uh, someone brought up conspiracy theories in the chat, and then we just started going off. And, and someone then someone else brought up uh, good old Hickory. I'm a, I'm a big Andrew Jackson fan. <laughs> Andrew motherfucking Jackson. History came about because we were talking about conspiracies. Okay, yeah, yeah. Jim and I are... Uh, it was about keeping England out of the war. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what that's in reference to when he says. Well, I, th I think it was because he mean the Emancipation uh, Link, Proclamation was. Yeah, because he was afraid of countries recognizing the uh, the CSA at, at you know legitimizing it and opening trade relations. Because here's the thing: um, if the, if the CSA had won the Civil War, they would have ended slavery probably in the, in the next twenty years or so anyway. Uh, didn't President Lincoln have a throne to rule from? I've heard that, but I don't know if it's true. I mean, Matt Hatter says yes, but yeah, he I'm... certainly had a chair that I certainly had a, a chair he died in. No, 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 great, great parrot is no, no. We're talking about an African gray. African grays are, are about ninety years. Um, oh, I, I mean, I, I met one a couple months ago that was like sixty three. So, yeah, and tortoises can live a really long time too. Yes, yes, they can. 
I love how the like the turtles from Rocky, Sylvester Stallone still owns them and they're still alive today. Like they actually showed up in the Creed films. Yeah, like right here it says Captain Graves average is 42 years. Like when the thing is when you're looking at averages that obviously so so because it's uh, the reason it says great parrot lifespan 23 years in the wild estimated is because when you do that estimation, you're looking at an average. And let's be real, no wild animal that you know has to deal with predators and shit is lasting 90 fucking years. Yeah. Because they're getting fucked up by other animals. Mm-hmm. But when they live with humans and they're pampered and all that shit. Yeah. I actually once saw this video of this woman. She was like 90 years old and she had a turtle that she bought in the 30s when she was five and it's still alive. All right, guys. We just hit the three hour mark. I think it is time to wrap. Let's say our Oh, goodbyes. what about some, some samurai? Some what? Some samurai action. Some, some yeah, what from reaction? the future. Yeah, some samurais from the year 2100. I've no idea what you're referring to. Hmm. And it's not like it's the whole reason I'm here. <laughs> oh, did you? I'm so fucking sorry. I completely. I won't lie. I. I was trying to be polite. I was trying to be polite, dude. Yeah, I, I was thinking that the hero. For some reason, I was thinking it was only hero. I'm so sorry. Yeah, let me pop. That I was in. trying to be I, polite. No, no. If, if I don't remember for for whatever reason, because I usually only have one one um creator of that per, uh, per stream so they their books don't conflict i totally didn't uh i mean yeah, it's all good i enjoyed that. being here yeah uh, no no sorry know. give me one moment i'm so i'm so sorry it's, yep. it's okay man it's okay I, i'm not mad or anything i'm just more amused than anything else yeah, yeah. I, um, I, I completely oh, yeah, I you got tap out so uh yeah I'll, I'll see you guys next time uh hope you all take care Next Sounds time, good, but it was a good one. Nice being here, I would have nice done this you. totally earlier in the show, man. I'm so sorry. Yeah, let's pop this up. Let's share this screen. Uh, Derek, you go ahead and say your goodbyes while I get this screen share going. Uh, yep, uh, I gotta keep on being great. Uh, Storm of Widers coming to spring, fall on Kickstarter, relentlessly brutal heal on for my comic, fall that, and uh, Jeff will don't melt steel beams. See ya. <laughs> oh. All righty, so yes, we've got uh, 2100 Samurai, Big Trouble, in Neo Detroit. So yes, by all means, I do not want to give you my location. All right, so this is an 11.99 <laughs> paperback. This is on Barnes & Noble's website, which is pretty sick. So you've already got this in stores. So what do you want to tell people about it? Let's go. So it tells the story of a young samurai named Kiro who was transported from his home in Fuel, Japan, to the cyberpunk future of 2100. He's left stranded on the mean streets of Neo Detroit. Now he's kind of got to make his own way. This uh. This paperback collects the first two issues, uh, which are kind of like a two-part pilot. We're working on issue four right now. That's going to be hitting uh, Indiegogo sometime in May. And uh, I do have uh, the interior for issue two pulled up if you want to. Uh, yep, to, I've uh, got that as well. Um, yep, I can share that right now. Oh, that's my channel thing. That's my channel trailer. Okay, I'll pull the interiors afterwards. Well, um... <laughs> That's a copyright song, so you might want to not want to play that. Ah, I don't give a fuck. My stream always gets demonetized anyway because I openly vape on it, so. All right, All well, right, yeah. uh, I'm presenting some, some pictures if you want to see the interiors of issue two. Yes, let's do the interiors. Here we go. Right. Yep, so it's, uh, you got some good, some good shit here. Now, uh, say, same question. Are you the, the writer or the writer and illustrator? I'm the writer. And how did you come about getting your illustrations? I I pay people money and they give me give me art. That's well, it. I mean like like are they are they consistent collaborators or does it change book to book? Or do you have like, uh, a consistent a collaborator? Team? I got this Brian and Brian guy named Brian Q. Uh he works with uh me both on Turn Samurai and my other books, Creature. Um, he's from Argentina. He's a really great guy. Uh, he did this art here and then, uh, yeah. Perfect. And then, so you go ahead and give us like, obviously being on the Barnes and Noble website, there's not anything in terms of like backing it or anything like that, just because you could just outright buy it. But do you have plans yeah. for a, uh, when you do it on Kickstarter, do you have plans for any sort of Kickstarter goals or what, what you're going to be doing with the Kickstarter itself? Yeah, so I'll be uh, putting issue four on Indiegogo here within the next month or so. Uh, we're currently working on it. We're in the ink stages. 
for that. And then once that will probably be the goal of like 1500, you know, pay for like the printing and uh, the shipping and whatnot. And I'll probably have like a special edition of, of this book with like more special features and all that stuff. Yeah. So you'll, you'll be re-releasing uh, the, the first two books then to go along with it. Yeah. Like this was the re-release, but I'm going to do like a, an extra uh, kind of thing with like more special features just as like an exclusive, whatever. So you you say you're on book four right now, and that book this uh, these cover books one and two. So is book three just unavailable at the moment, or uh, it's available digitally? You can buy it on my Patreon, and then um, if you want to buy it physically, you can always just contact me. I have plenty of uh, plenty of extras. Uh, for for book three, we actually kind of switch things up, kind of do more of a grayscale style, um, uh, and then we're going to continue that with issue four. It looks really good. And was there a certain aesthetic you were going for when doing this? Because it looks more like it's it's attempting to be uh, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but like a um, the art style of like a like a 2000s not anime, but like like 2005 sort of like a, an avatar or something that was inspired by anime or manga, but not actually anime and manga. Was that your intent? Yeah, this is definitely the direction I was going for, like a manga esque kind of book. You know, like it's basically just a combination of like all my favorite things, like Matrix, Film Scale, Blade Runner. You know, all I that, see a all severed that arm. Out. I like that. It shows you're not afraid to show violence. And you say, fuck you. So this, this is a very adult-oriented book. You don't buy this for kids, I assume. No, no. This is a mature audience's only book, for sure. Um, yeah. It's got the good yeah. <laughs> but By all means, man. No, I, I'd love to hear more about it. I, uh, it's, I, I'm enjoying having it on here. I, I, I feel, little, feel like an asshole because I totally would have brought this up earlier. I completely... No, it's, it's reason, okay. It's okay. I was having fun. Yeah, so uh, it's a maturity book. Basically, I, I I started this like before I even graduated high school. So like this thing is like old, old. I mean, obviously. It's oh, there's my name right there. What? I see my name up there. <laughs> up there, yeah. <laughs> uh, you should know Tyler is a girl. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, it's, it's still his name. Just yeah, yeah. Um, oh. So what what yeah. genre is this specifically? Because obviously you say ne- when cyberpunk. you say Neo Detroit, I assume it's cyberpunk, right? Yeah, Neo Detroit. That's basically just like Neo Gotham from Batman Beyond. So I would say yeah, no, it, it, cyberpunk is my favorite fictional genre. So <laughs> me too. Um, but yeah, kind of just combining all my favorite things. These are a few of my favorite things. I think. Yeah, that's well, dude, no, I, I mean, eleven ninety nine for a paperback is is super doable when you got two issues together. People will be yep. supporting that instead of, uh, you know, people will be supporting that instead of of Marvel or DC, which by all means I can always get behind people doing that. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I, I've added the link to that to the description. I dropped it in the chat, and anyone that wants to drop, you know, twelve bucks and get two two issues in one. Um, how, how many pages is that total? What's the page length? Do you know? Uh, sixty six, I believe. 66 pages. Oh, okay. Boom. So that, that's, let's see. That's like less than 50 cents a page. Yeah, 6, 12, 18, 24, and then, 30, 46, um, 42, 48, 54, 60, 66. Yeah. And then, like I said, we did kind of upgrade things with uh, issue three. Kind of got to show you the, you know, the upgrade. And then is, is issue four, going, which is coming to your Kickstarter, is that going to be done at the same style? Because you said you had to change for issue three. Is, it's going to be done at the real? same child as issue three, which I have presented ready to show. Perfect. There we go. Oh, look at that. Yeah, it's going to be the same, the same style as this. the grace. Yeah, the grayscale. I see what you mean now. Yeah, we definitely uh, switch things up. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, and this is uh, something we did. Uh, it's called the like uh, for the, the special edition was like the black, white, and the red. Uh, that was like for the hundred dollars special editions. Dude, yeah, no, this this is sick by all means. When uh, when does the kicks? Uh, you said Indiegogo for issue four. When does that go live? Do you know? Uh, May probably early May, like the first or first. I I like to have it like the first Friday of the month or whatever. Uh, so whenever that is, that's we have what I'm shooting for right now. Well, when when that goes live, if you want to come back on so we can promote it properly, by all means, that would be, we can yeah. see if we can get some live donos during the show, whatnot. That would be fantastic. I uh, but yeah, uh, until then, first two oh, issues out are out for yeah, go go for it. I love this. My goal is to basically like kind of redo the rest of the book and have it all be this style. See some inspiration from Dull Scene from Street Fighter there. Maybe I'm just making that up. You, you, you are not. You are totally not. Oh, my, my um, Yeah, I knew it. Let's let's just say um, in issue four, there's more Street Fighter references. 
and maybe I go full for you can. Well, dude, I'm sold. Like I said, you, you said, but Cyberpunk actually, yeah, Dalsim was, was the direct inspiration for that. Actually, I, I think, again, I, I know my Street Fighter, I know my Capcom. Despite being so upset with him lately, no, I do. This this is great. Thank you. Yeah, we'll we'll have you back on when when the actual Indiegogo drops, and we'll do some some proper promotion for it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Excellent. Well, dude, thank you so much. Thank all of you guys. Let's um, yeah, let's uh, let's call it for the evening. We'll we'll redo this at a later date and do it proper, and we will give our goodbyes. Tyler, we will start with you. Tell the people who you are and what you do while I find your YouTube and drop it in here. Again, of course, my YouTube channel, my TikTok, and my Twitter is Prince Tyler. Like I said in the beginning of the stream, I do videos on social issues, including like, you know, social events, games, and also movies, particularly Japanese monster movies. And yeah, uh, I'll see you guys over at my channel. So please check me out, please. <laughs> and uh, on, uh, on on Twitter, it's uh, is it Tyler Preston 20? Yeah, the handle is Tyler Preston twenty, but I have it like as Prince Tyler as well. So either one can work. And then for those that don't know, the whole reason I found found you, found out about you, was uh, you actually also do cover a lot of, uh, I believe it. The, you talk a lot about Ripperverse and just comics in general, and, and just a lot of the culture, same sort of culture war stuff that we talk about here. I've seen you having opinions on so. Yeah, exactly. I do that almost every other day. And so I don't have a direct schedule of when the videos come out. So whenever I feel like it, I just post the video. So whenever I feel like it. So. Excellent. Well, dude, it's been awesome having you on. Thank you so much. Last, now we got Melee K. Tell the people who you are, what you do while I pull up your guys' Twitter, uh, YouTube. Oh, thank you. Well, first of all, Leon, thank you for having me on. This is a lot of fun. Uh, it was nice to thank meet you. everyone today. And yeah, so I'm Melee K. I'm one half of Melee Games. Melee James has been the one uh, in the chat. In case you're wondering, there is two of us. Uh, we are a gaming channel. So on YouTube, Twitch, Rumble, all the fun stuff. We're streaming games. We're talking about games. Uh, we just we love the video game industry and we want to see it improve. But we also want to show you that there's white pills out there. There are good games out there and we'll still laugh at the bad ones too. So uh, for us coming up, we have uh, a community event tomorrow, actually tomorrow night at 7 p.m. PST. Uh, and that is going to be the Battlefront Classic Collection that just came out. We know that it's botched, um, but we did tell our community that we were going to do that event. So we're still doing it. So if you do have a copy on steam and you want to join us you're more than welcome to just hop in our discord um but if you don't want to play that version and you like the old 2005 version we're going to be playing that the following tuesday so you can also play that one with us uh otherwise you'll see us uh, doing the mail and madness podcast every two weeks so this thursday we're going to have our our next episode and uh sunday is going to be our one year streaming anniversary so we're going to do something fun on sunday so stay tuned Excellent. Well, I can't wait to see it. Hopefully all you guys go and sub to Melee Games. Their link is also in the chat, but it's in the bio of the video as well. And last but not least, we got Nick. Once again, tell the people who you are, what you do, and where to find you. All right. So uh, if you want to stalk me here, all of my bad takes, you can follow me on Twitter at the Phoenix Press. YouTube's are the same. We are currently uh, 10 people away from 500, so doing a uh, good push for that. And then uh, I stream multiple times a week, so you can catch that. And uh, yeah. Uh, uh, for speaking of streaming, can you do me a favor and uh, drop your YouTube link? Because the one that's on your Twitter is dead. It, that leads to a dead channel. So I don't know if you've got the accurate one up on your on your Twitter. Hmm. Okay. Uh, one second. Well, I'm kind of curious now. Uh, yeah, if I go to your link tree and go to YouTube, it, it takes to a, to a dead channel. I don't know if it's just that your link tree is having a problem or whatnot. So I, I only linked your Twitter. In, okay, uh, now, my I'm, now I'm... Uh... So we'll make sure folks get the accurate uh, way to reach you if they want to, to you know, come on and enjoy more of your content. Yeah, that's weird. Um, huh. Eh. Yeah, I, I got it. I'm putting the private chat. That, that is that is odd. Um, huh. Well, yeah, I got the I, I just shared it. So. All right, perfect. I will drop that in the regular chat and you can continue. Sorry to throw off your groove there. Just want to make sure. All right, go on. <laughs> Yeah, so so yeah, I I do stream a couple times a week. My big one's Friday Night Frenzy, which melee. I'd love to have you on the Friday Night Frenzy sometime. Uh, all of you guys are, are invited. So so yeah, and then make sure to catch my uh, comic book coming out next uh, next uh, okay, month or so from now. Excellent. We're happy to do it, brother. Thank you so much for coming on. 
And then, uh, yeah, last but not least, you got me. And, guys, at the end of the day, you know why we do this. You know what we do this on Mondays. We do this on Mondays. We want to give you something to start your week strong off with. And, you know, nerd culture, I'm I glad that Melee brought up, you know, there's some white pills out there because there are some white pills in nerd culture. And so often we think too much about the negative. We think too much about how things are going bad, things are going downhill. And in a lot of instances, that's true. But if you become apathetic to it, if you stop caring about it, if you stop finding reasons to laugh about it and only spend your time angry about it, that's why we lose. That, that, that's why our side has lost, been you know, infected, is due to the, the lack of gatekeeping and also just lack of wanting to have fun in a way that makes us look like the good guys. So just go out there, keep doing what you're doing, keep embracing media that you agree with, and keep voting with your wallet when it comes to things you disagree with. Listen to other people's points of view, listen to their opinions, but also do your damnedest to debunk and destroy them in a good comedic fashion if you cannot stand what they have to say and if what they have to say is objectively wrong. It's very important just to, to get multiple ideas and voices out there, uh, which is real diversity, diversity of thought. And that's why you come to this show. You know, we're not an echo chamber. We agree. We disagree. It depends on the nature of the conversation at hand. But well, I think today was a good conversation. I appreciate you guys for being a part of it. So this, this is for you. This is for all the members, all the vital idols. You guys have a fantastic rest of your evening. And you guys know it's all here in the Nerdos. Fear. Mm-hmm.